Mob Rules Episode 87, brought to you by Oktoberfest. Oi, spores, grots, dacca, speed, and lederhosen, and everything a good... We are not an orc podcast, Dave. <laughs> in Oktoberfest, especially. Orc. Orktoberfest. You know, what I appreciate, Dave, is that you Leader tried. Hosen, that I don't understand in that copy. I don't appreciate that you tried. We've gone over. I think our main plan for when we were recording episodes for Orktober was to just talk about Space Marines. Oh, yeah. No, no. I. We weren't going to talk about orcs at all today. That's, that seems legit. That yeah. seems legit. Because, you know, we, we named our, our podcast... Three years ago, after a a rule that one army had, we should just call rename ourselves. We're gonna rebrand. It's gonna be we'd lose Savior Protocol. All of all of our twelve. <laughs> oh God! You know Intercepting how much, wait, I can't wait for all the people. To be, <laughs> can't wait for all the Tau players to be like, "You're a Tau podcast. None of you even play Tau." Oh, sorry, there's only two of them oh, out there. Yeah, nobody yeah, wants. No, well, no there one, will no be one after, wants to play Tau. <laughs> there will be after we rebrand. That's it. Hey, they just won a GT this weekend. Tower are two Actually, players, a major. Our two listeners. They they won a major tournament this weekend. Yep. Yeah, after a small. It was was that including the FAQ stuff there? Uh, it was not. Yeah, no. I was gonna say I don't think. No. It was. But that makes it even harder for him. Honestly, yeah, it's fair, fair, fair. But yeah, it's, it's, it's They were huge winners. <laughs> yep, Dave. Yeah. After huge the back winners, <laughs> huge wieners. <laughs> after Absolutely. the after the FAQ, they they came out. You know, they didn't go up or down. Really, they just kind of stayed the same. Yeah, but if everybody else goes down, that's a net gain. That's what I'm saying. Like, so they're winners because they didn't go down. Sure. Unlike your mom. There it is. Oh. So hey guys, what have we all been up to? Yeah. I want to hear what John's been up to. What have I been yeah. up to? Yeah, yeah, John, let's hear oh, it. Shit, this is all kinds of out of order here. That's why uh, we're doing it. All kinds yep. of confused. Um, we're not an orc podcast, so we I have to keep <laughs> things fresh. Yep. I got super excited um, about Eldar again, so I bought a, a bunch of stuff. And now, was this prefac? Yeah, uh, this was prefac. Okay. So I got super hyped. Oh. I um, started painting about uh, patch painting like. 19 Dark Creepers and 10 Howling Banshees. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's get it all together. And then proceeded to make army lists with no Howling Banshees and very little Dark Creepers in it. <laughs> I was a huge fan of those lists because they lacked both of those things. <laughs> Which is just like, I mean, that's very me where I'm going to get like a hard on for a certain kind of model, but then I will be incapable of writing a list with it. Like I tried this whole thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to make the avatar great again. Yeah. And like I tried to, and there's one list that was kind of like passable. It'd be okay to do. Well, so you actually take it to the table. You don't know what any of your lists can do. You, you, you've got a rough idea. Fair, I have a rough idea to but, the point where I don't want to fish out 60 guardians. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I kind of went back to Dire Avenger. So I kind of started tinkering around with my old list and kind of what I had going on. And even before the FAQ, I was cutting down my Rangers to just one squad, um, mainly because to take advantage of the the Alatox stratagem, where at the start of the shooting phase, you know, you, you nominate one unit of Rangers. And you're yep. like, Those are sixes to hit. Um, it's a lot easier to do that when you only have one larger unit of Rangers, true. as opposed to true. three little ones. So I, I kind of pulled back to there, pulled out some more Dire Avengers, added a Wave Serpent because Roombaing people is just so much fun. Uh, when I say Roombaing people, I mean just kind of charging things with a Wave Serpent and then like moving away slightly, then charging again. Then you know, just kind of. I, I'm familiar. Vacuum. I do the same up. thing with repulsors, so only it doesn't kill anything. <laughs> yeah, and you're only wasting a three, you know, a 350 point model yeah. instead right. of 120. <laughs> It's not wasting. It's not a waste. I still get to shoot full ballistic skill and everything when I fly away, so I'm good. Because sure. when the, the times I've charged with a wave serpent and I've been successful, I just make this noise. I'm like, boop. <laughs> and they're like, you're hitting on sixes. I'm like, eh, no, I'm not charging you to kill anything. Just, <laughs> you know, I'm going to boop you on the nose and then move away, shoot you, and then boop you again. It's it's a beautiful thing. But so Twin boops. Twin boops, if you will. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of uh, got all that together. I, I love those Banshee models, though. I've not actually yeah, painted really nice. any of them before. Gorgeous. I mean, shame that they're fine cast, obviously, because you know I spent a lot of time like with a little hair dryer trying to get those swords straight before screaming mm. and giving up. Um, but like gorgeous models, I like this. The flow of the hair, the the movement is is very very good. And same with the Dark Reapers, actually. I'm kind of starting to really like before, kind of looking at them. 
just all of the different aspect warriors i'm like well yeah that's an eldar with hair that's an eldar with a big gun you know but there is like real subtle differences in sure. all of the armors which like i'm starting to notice and i kind of really enjoy here like the dark reapers have like really thick feet slash ankle armor right to kind of ground themselves in place for shooting mm. and, and that's that's why they don't have battle focus john yeah I, I think that uh, most of the, the stuff boots. that's in fine cast currently. <laughs> <laughs> moon boots. Well, I almost killed John. Oh, well. <laughs> it was this vegan gluten free beer that we're enjoying today. <laughs> you know what? Which your, I your wife is home, John. It's not our fault you don't have any beer. <sighs> I mean, it's her fault I don't have any that's beer what I'm now. Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it's they're, they're they're great models, and you were saying something about that. I, I, I really feel like with the technology they've advanced, with uh, what they've done with uh, resin and everything else, the way the plastics are coming out right now, you know, I, I feel like they should really redo them in plastic. I do not want to assemble a unit of howling banshees that are attached to their base by two strands of hair, doing some weird flippy dynamic pose. It'll look amazing, but like I've seen their night haunt stuff. They attach giant ass models to their base by like one strand of ectoplasm. What the and fuck? I they... need at least two strands of ectoplasm. <laughs> to work. I'm like, what the hell are they gonna do with uh, with like forty kiss or like flippy? I don't know. I guess, I I guess I'd imagine it'd head... be like Go feet. Ahead. I was thinking feet. Yeah, fit, but, uh, feet. I guess. Yeah, yeah like no. the witch elves. Yeah, from, from fantasy or maybe the harlequins. Yeah, I can I can see that. So it it would be good for sure. But like I said, I, I worry about the the stability that like all these advances, everything needs to be jumping or flipping or things like that, and it looks cool. But I am not careful with my models. Fair. So I am also not careful with your models. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I, I broke <laughs> like five or six of my jet bikers just playing in the event. Yeah. So his scouts flew around my truck like it was in a tornado. <laughs> just. Just every time I stopped, that that box would be like, and and not because you're sliding. driving badly, but just because you're shaking the box every time you stop, <laughs> like a maraca. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so it was my charo phase. So. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Um, I pre-ordered uh, the Warhound Titans for. Um, Adapsis Titanicus. Oh, oh am, I, am I supposed to pre-order the uh, Wake the uh, Dead box? I was going to say Dave is supposed to pre-order the Wake ah, the Dead box that okay. we are going to split uh, so I can have uh, more sprues I won't assemble for a long time. Hey, me too. And a spirit's here. Uh, <laughs> and I need to get on that with somebody because I really want that spirit's here model. He's, he's pretty great. So yeah, we, we saw our first release of October, which is the Wake the Dead uh, Space right. Marine Eldar box, which is the mm-hmm. best way to start October by not talking about it and not actually partaking. Exactly. I mean, they did have an Orc article today. Yeah, but it was. The- I, I liked it. Well, well, here's the thing. You gotta, you gotta view, uh, and we're gonna talk. GW they release things as in pre-order periods, not when they physically release things. Right. Right. So the stuff they released. Uh, on September 30th, which is uh, for sale on the 5th or the 6th or whatever, or tomorrow, um, that's September releases. So, just got to be patient. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I didn't play any games. Um, I've been listening more to... Um, uh, this podcast? Yes. Yes, mm. this podcast. Legit. Um, trying to... <laughs> got to boost those numbers, kid. <laughs> um, I listened to the podcast. It was funny. It was. It was good. Uh, I, I put my computer in the shop, so a lot of my digital stuff is, is being slowing down. Um, and then, oh, Talon of Horus. I've been continuing to listen to Talon oh, of yeah. Horus, which is a great book, which it's the, the Black Library curse of every time I listen to it, their stuff, I just want to start a new army. And I got to not do that or listen exclusively to Aldari uh, audiobooks, <laughs> which I think is going to be difficult. So you've got Gav and then... So just Gav, yeah, like three, yeah, there's yeah, like two much. of them. Pretty much, he's the only one who writes all our stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say. So there's there's like four total books. Haven't you read them all? Uh, slash listen no, to them all? No, there's like Path of the Warrior and Path of the uh, Street Prostitute, and yeah. oh. that is a classy Eldar path. Let me tell you, path. they really put their all it's, into that. They don't call path it Street of the Prostitute wastrel. though. It's it's uh, my dog's very mad about about the lack of Eldar content from Black yeah, Library. Tell. Path of the Enamored Courtesan, I think is what it's oh. pro- appropriately called. Path of the Hoor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty to, much... You need to walk it around. Who wants to join up? Man, I wouldn't want to... We wanna do. S- We're I, good. I don't know if I want to see the Exarch of that. 
<laughs> May I offer you a soul stone in this trying time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, that's all I've been up to. Um, Dave, what you been up to? Well, I've been uh, ramping up for uh, nothing because I was waiting for the fact to drop so I could figure out what my doubles list was going to be. Mm. Um, oh, because... and I had the benefit of the fact dropping and it not changing my list at all. Yay. Yay. But anyway, Woo. Dave. Uh, it actually didn't change my list at all either. Uh, I was just waiting to see. Uh, Cody's list could have been potentially more affected because he's using a uh, uh, Death Watch Smash Captain. I mean, but, okay, sorry, yeah, but but I mean, it it didn't really. Your you lists know. got worse though, just yeah. not by just not by a lot, not in the way that it would have affected me. Well, I mean, well, you have if, it aff- if it affects your teammate, it affects you. Yeah, but so I'm not. Four- I'm not charging over models into combat with fly but Why i can still fly over the, no i'm saying now I, now i'm now i'm not i'm not right, yeah, i'm not right. able to charge over so therefore i it doesn't i mean odds are i would have cleaned up the chaff in the way uh, anyway i mean it's a bajillion sure uh, uh sick what six bolter shots from uh hitting on twos well it's it's 12 guys it's 12 shots from each guy if they're rapid yeah. fire mm-hmm. so mm, hurricane bolters hit them yeah just light them up um, and then anything big that I was planning on charging, you know, I, I would have charged over, or, you know, originally, but now I'll just have to adjust my tactics around it. I'm not losing my mind like some people. What do you mean I can't charge with fly? That's yeah. the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Not really. I mean, it's it's definitely a game balance thing and not a narrative thing. Yeah. It, well, because it makes sense for some units, right? Right. Like, uh, uh, like jump pack guys, right? Like they are going to run across the ground and then jump. Uh, into combat or whatever but uh, but like a guy on a jet bike yeah i don't know yeah well that's really only you me and dupree <laughs> yeah a i mean great Owen it's, it's custom movie. all the uh, custom jet players and, with eh, nobody likes shining those guys spears anymore. right really no, uh they took a, hit they took a hit but i i well, think it's interesting it kind of it brings back the need for um screens i mean i know we had screens yeah. before like, but it seems like with the changes to reserves, they're like, oh, well, you know, screens aren't that important anymore. Right. And then I re- kept on reading and I'm like, oh, that changed the jump. Screens are very important now, but for exactly. kind of different reasons. Right. Yep. So chaff units are still pretty good, I think. Right. Or maybe even better than they were before. Mm, I don't know. Probably they are. Yeah. Well, yeah they're definitely better if you're going second, for sure. Oh, man. That strategy but, is really nice. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, anyway. But, sorry, what are you up to? Back so, to you. So I've got... I've got a, the Heroic 32. Okay. Uh, I have uh, Don Eagle Captain on a jet bike. Right? Don Eagle Captain. Yeah, uh, for you non competitive Captain on a Don Eagle jet John, bike. That's it. For captain you non competitive players, the Heroic 32 is a standard 310 man infantry squad and two company commander guard battalion. They're exclusively to generate 5 CP and hold back field objectives. And maybe regen some CP. Yeah. Right. But at this point, the most I can regen is six, so I'm not worried about it. You know, like, uh, I built you this list around... your company commander will survive six turns. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm not even taking that. I'm not taking the uh, Kirov's Aquila or the uh, Relic Trait. Hmm. I'm not worried the about it. The Relic Trait, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm actually putting, all, I'm putting all that cool shit on the, the Dawn Eagle. Okay. So. Oh, um, sorry. So you got a captain on a Dawn Eagle yeah. jet bike. I've got three. So I'm doing a patrol detachment of custodes. Okay. I have three uh, regular custode guardians. Yep. Uh, one with a shield and the sword and two with a spear. Okay. And then five, a, a squad of five regular uh, Veritas Praetors. Cool. Which is which is the jet bikes for those. Man, that yeah, that's a hell of a unit. Mm, so a big old squad right there, too. It is. It's sexy. It's so good. Uh, the three that I have that are not on uh, jet bikes are going to set up in the teleportarium. Oh, okay. Alongside uh, Cody Smash Captain. They're going to come down first Mm -hmm. in a triangle so that he can come down in the middle because Death Watch doesn't quite get everything that uh, Blood Angel's got. Sure. So that he can come down in the middle. So if they choose to Auspex scan, well, first off, I'm getting a three-up save with the shield uh, in Vuln, so I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. And then he can come down safely, and if they choose not to Auspex scan, he's still coming down safely and is no longer the closest unit. True. He can't be targeted. So, you know, that's a strat we have uh, that we're working on. And then he can smash into stuff after he teleports a unit of Hellblasters or Aggressors over to light somebody's face off. So, solid. Solid play. That's, that's, Sounds cool. That's mm-hmm. our standard tactic. Um, 
and then I'm just going to make a lot of room noises as I move the bikes around because because <laughs> uh, I think they sound like the Jetsons in my head. So, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, according to the Ultramarine movie, a land speeder sound like dirt bikes. This is not so, a land speeder, though. Oh, so, God. So floating Imperial <laughs> technology is going to go... Like that's, a fart? Yeah, that's a custodian <laughs> no, jet is, bike. That's that's regular space. Mm-hmm. This is this is top tier. That does not translate well to. I'm, it's, yeah. I feel like oh, I was I'll in, be cutting that. I out. feel like I was. <laughs> in, <laughs> Please continue, Dave. I felt like I was in Top Gun there for a minute. That first time THX ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> that plane just fly over me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, Dave's tie literally flew behind him. Yeah. A <laughs> tie compliments your hoodie really well. Yeah, it's a classy move I got to do. Uh, so yeah, so I, I've been I went out and I picked up. Uh, uh, shout out to Taylor who uh, gave me a bunch of guardsmen. I picked up two boxes of guardsmen and a five pack of the easy to build guys, and then I built them all up and uh, did some mild converting to make two company commanders out of it. Sure, that's my favorite thing about guard is taking two regular dudes, putting a fancy hat in them, and being like company commander yeah actually when it, the, it fits the fluff of the guard because i figure he's been alive by 19 hours at this point so he probably has made the rank of company sure, commander se- senior senior so that what i found interesting to me is that the sergeants of each squad have a las pistol and a chainsword mm-hmm. but the company commander has a las pistol doesn't have the chainsword no he gives that up in order to hold curves aquila right i, I mean to, uh, he, gives he can't that up. take one what he could i just for sake of um being able to tell the models apart oh, for, okay. for this. So the sergeants, all my sergeants in my squads have helmeted heads instead of bare heads, but okay. they're also just holding a chainsword <laughs> and a LAS pistol. So it balanced, it balanced out. Mm. Whereas the company commanders are holding LAS pistols. And then the other hand, because I had to do some magic stuff, uh, the, the arms, uh, anybody that's ever built plastic guardsman knows that the heavy weapon squads have got one hand that's holding what looks like a twig. Sure. So I did some crazy converting work to, make their other hands look like they were jerking off because you know oh that's sure, what okay. you do. Oh, for sure. As, as they do <clears throat> right it's it's what mortar squads do is sit in cover and aggressively jerk off towards the <laughs> what, enemy what are the perks of being senior command <laughs> it's the ability to just jerk off at the enemy it's to hide in a corner and jerk, jerk off, off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I, I i bought um a box of the troops i actually had to ask you which one was the official box to the troops because i looked at them and i went these are identical Except for names are different. Which one of these is the right box for troops, Dan? Yeah, he had to come up to me in the middle of a magic event. Yeah, he was playing that. some oh, sort man. of nerd card game. And I was like, I slapped the cards out of his hands and like slapped them down on the table. Jesus like, Christ, Which one man. of these? That's like worse than punching a bloodthirster off the table. That could be worth like way more. <laughs> no, it was sealed. so I didn't know. care. Oh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he told me which one to buy, so I bought them and I built them up. When you get to a certain age, you just don't care if you die. Mm, that's fair. <laughs> I was hoping for it. I was like, no. Make my Please day, Danny. Give me the sweet release <laughs> of death. <laughs> now I want to see just a, a web series of Dave, like slowly ramping up, irritating Danny, in the hope that Danny gives him the sweet release of death. So it starts like really subtle. I don't think I want to see this series. Like, <laughs> like Danny goes to his work fridge and he's like, "Hey, who ate my sandwich?" And I like pans across the table, like, "What up, man?" <laughs> <laughs> It's tasty. It's tuna fish. You son of a Tell bitch. Your wife. Episode two. Tell your wife, thanks. <laughs> Episode two is just Dave being like, "Hey, Danny, I hope no one cuts the brake lines of my car with these knife here, and my car is alone <laughs> outside." Here, I. Uh, it's too bad my car is already jacked up so that you can get under it more easily. Like, <laughs> just, God, I just man, there's just all these circumstances that would really screw me over if that happened. Davey and passive aggressive suicider. <laughs> <laughs> I like to walk into the yard of prison and just pick the biggest guy and kick him right in the nuts. <laughs> Wait to see what happens. You seem like the kind of guy who go to prison, find the biggest guy, go up to him, stand beside him silently for 30 seconds, and be like, well, guess you're not going to murder me then, and walk away. Like in a huff. It's not <laughs> true. <laughs> That's not true at all. I would fart <sighs> first. Oh, you would fart? I would like the whole time I'd be standing there waiting for just him to, to murder me. Just to protect your, your butt virginity well, right yeah. in prison. No, because he knows you have a stinky butthole. <laughs> Dave the skunk uh, eaten. Uh, <laughs> oh man, these are nicknames I definitely do not stick around. Um, hashtag the skunk. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I would take hashtag the skunk. That Dave, would be fine. Social media god realizes uh, that by saying something won't stick around, yeah. it will. Yeah, 
<laughs> but hey, models, what else have you been up to, Dave? Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, that's about it. I picked up everything I needed. I ordered the rest of the stuff I need because I think I'm going to still continue to do the uh, guard and custodes in uh, ITC competitive play. Okay. It's maybe, a popular combo. Maybe, maybe mix in um, you know another patrol detachment with... Uh, some uh, iron hands or something and maybe like two repulsors i don't know we'll see what happens but <laughs> yeah so no more additional custodes <laughs> or guard just iron hands repulsors <laughs> that's what i'm hearing i'm sorry i just did, did i, did I yeah. could i get us uh, could i get a supreme deta- uh, command detachment with just three repulsors is that an option i mean if you, if you take, take three, three tech marines yeah. sweet um oh that's true i could do that wow why didn't i do that for the other one anyway uh <laughs> i don't know so that so you the want back. command points so the fact makes me for all uh, of those repulsor based command uh, traits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are there, are there any? Is there one? No. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, there is. It's called reroll that dice, mm. which but, you're already doing thanks to Bobby G. Yeah. yeah. Um. Hey, dude. So you could take three tech tech marines, Bobby G, and then take four repulsors and out of one detachment. You could just do two supreme commands with no eight repulsors. Yeah, eight, eight repulsors is too many. 320 was the cheapest I could get them to, to oh, still God. have the last cannons. Keep, keep talking. I'm going to do some math here. Okay. Oh, if I, no, I can't because my phone's off. Yeah. Six repulsors, five tech marines, and Bobby G. Yeah, that's too many points. Not if you cheat. What about that's fair. three repulsors? What that's about... One, too little. So, the thing I found with the repulsors in, in, no repulsors. in the... No uh, repulsors. <laughs> well, obviously, you've A never, good army. <laughs> you've Sorry, never met me before. That's what John met. <laughs> so, I honestly believe that uh, the, frequent, uh, the, uh, the fact changes... I would have done a hell of a lot better at Ursa. Yeah, that that two CP cover, I wouldn't. Have, I don't think I would have lost oh, a sure. single repulsor. Oh yeah, because no one takes Iron Hands or Imperial Fists, so you don't have a lot of ignore cover. Iron Warriors. I was gonna say Iron oh, Hands. Whatever. I take Both. Iron Hands all the time. What are you talking about? Danny had to twist my arm it's and o- take. It's October. I have to. I didn't twist anything. He was. I was like, Danny, this sandwich is delicious, and he twisted my. Well, arm. Well, it's because we were looking at you, and you're like, Hey, I'm gonna take Ultramarine, or I'm gonna do this, and we're like, Why? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's my fluffy fun. Why? What do you mean? But yeah, so that's that's basically what I've been up to is just theory crafting lifts and, and trying to make something fluffy and, and also still um, enjoyable for me to paint, which is why I'm thinking about adding a scout sentinel for the last 47 points instead of an extra oh. guard squad that some people want me to take. And and Marlboro's listener is participating <sighs> in the uh, doubles event at LVO is preparing for. We'll get a free kill point uh, off of that scout sentinel. So I was going to say... Mob Rules listeners, tell us what Dave should take with his extra 47 points. Oh, yeah, he points. has 47 points. Hashtag Dave's 47. 47. Point. Yeah, Dave's 47. Dave's 47. I, I vote for a single custody. Or just one dude? It doesn't, That's too it's many not, points. It's too many points. How many, like the, the, 50, 52 the on points. foot dude? Yeah, 52 points. They're, they're 40 points base. 53, I thought. No, 52. It's 12 points for a Guardian Spear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah gross. What if I just take... Get rid of the spear and just take the sword without the shield. Does, can you do that? I don't know if you can. I, I don't have the codex here, so I can't actually look at it. I mean, but, I could look at it, but I'm not going yeah. to. Yeah, well, your phone's in. That's because if you turn it on, it'll sound like we're trying no, to sign my phone is, my phone is on. It's just in airplane mode. So you you can can look, I can look up my book if I yeah. want to, but, but I refuse to. But he doesn't want to. That. Yeah, he doesn't have time that's for that. That's fair. Hey, Danny, what did you have time for the past two <laughs> yeah. weeks? Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. So... Uh, I've been really kind of uh, working on building in theory, and I've been doing a lot of trading and purchasing of models from people like secondhand. Mm-hmm. Um, so I picked up uh, uh, one of our listeners, Derek, who's moving out of state, and so we had some extra sprues that I picked up from him. I got a couple of a couple of witch sprues, which I wanted. I really wanted that tantalus, yeah, and I picked up a tantalus. <laughs> Which is awesome because I didn't have one. And so now I have a Reaper and a Tantalus, both from Derek. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, good on you, Derek. Yeah, I got a... Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for making mm, Danny even better right when you were leaving. <laughs> Maximum Derek. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the Tantalus is, is a cool model, but more of a small handicap. I mean, it's cool and all. Oh, you say that. I've got oh. some tricks, though, I think. You always have tricks. Yeah. You're like the freaking rabbit. So if you make it Cult of the Red Grief because you can make it Witch Cult, Right, it gets to advance after charging, or charge after advancing, <laughs> and so it, it moves sixteen inches, but it can advance double its movement. <laughs> so you can move it thirty-two inches and still assault somebody, and it has like strength eight, AP minus two attacks in close combat. So you're a monster, 
Kind of. Okay. I mean, we knew. I mean, this like personally, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I On am. the gaming table, a little nicer. <laughs> um, not when the sweat band goes on. So, oh man, it's yeah. When business. the sweat band goes on, then it's serious business. Hey, don't, when don't the talk sweat bands go on, your chances are gone. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Shit. That That's good. Great. I need that, that on man. A that, that, I just got the chills. You need uh, that on a T-shirt for yeah. LBO now, or a sweatband. <laughs> 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 could you? Could you imagine John trying to put that on a sweatband for us? It's either like really tiny font, <laughs> <laughs> or it goes all the way around the sweatband. So you're like ballerina pirouetting, and your opponent's like, "What are you doing? Like, read my head." <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna get a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> around your head yeah where the sweatband forehead. would go so that when the sweatband is on it covers it up so they know that once the sweatband is on like they can't see it the anymore. chances disappear work's gonna want to know what's under that sweatband though i think <laughs> just danny showing it for i'm gonna see you in a suit with a sweatband <laughs> uh i've got pictures of that hmm. anyway so anyway yeah moving on. so uh i've been working on kind of upgrading my harlequins list a little bit uh post fac um although i kind of had the list that i came up with before the FAQ, like the new one I wanted to try, um, is still going to be, it's going to be just as good. So I'm probably going to try that one out a little bit. And that, I basically, I had a Prophets of Flesh detachment in my Harlequin list um, with uh, six Talos, um, Urian Rakarth, uh, and that's it. Um, but I'm going to drop that. I'm going to take 60 Witches and two Succubuses and Succubi instead and see how that works out. I think it's pretty good. Um, it adds kind of a horde aspect to it it lets me really much through infantry screens really well because witches are good at killing those mm -hmm. um and then uh i've also been kind of working on a backup for funsies list uh i have made uh an acquisition of 18 zoanthropes within the last week you sound like lando <laughs> I've made a deal to keep my army competitive <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> so I actually think I may have gotten too many zone throws, so we'll see what happens. Uh, it'll be fun. Are you like so, me with Lictors a couple of years ago? Do you do you remember that? Like two or three Lictors, years ago. Lictor spam? I, I got a little excited about Lictors, and I've amassed 15 Lictors. <laughs> okay, that's too many Lictors. Why do you have 15 Lictors? Because uh, I Why put Turnids in 7th edition. 13 zone throws. Because you can take units of six. You can only take lictors and units of one. <laughs> but I was running in seventh, the Death Leaper formation. Sure. So I had like seven uh, lictors off of that. Mm -hmm. And then there was another lictor based formation. I remember there was. shits and giggles. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was just, it was incredibly fun back in the day to just punch the back of tanks with lictors. Lictors are still really good, actually. I, th I mean, I think they're decent anyway. A flat minus one to hit in melee or all the time is just a really good ability. So. Yeah. Are you not concerned at all about with uh, about the smite decree or increasing in value for your your bajillion zoanthropes? So uh, as long as the zoanthropes are close to a neurothrope, they get to reroll ones for psychic tests, and I think that'll help to mitigate that quite a bit. But do they get do they get one dice or two dice on the first two smite? dice? Okay. No, they're like legit psychers. They have like a all right, grown so up not smite. an astropath. No. All right. And their smite goes to twenty four. And if they have the more models they have in their unit, the better their smite is. Okay. So so just use all my basilisks to light up your zoanthropes. Sure. Yeah. Go for it. They count as characters. No, you can no? shoot at them. They have a three plus invul. Oh man, I screwed. Aren't that they up part of the unit then? But they were though, hmm? or are they separate from the unit? What are the the the, the zoanthropes? Are you talking about the neurothrope? Yeah, or the, the neur neurothrope. So the neurothrope is a character. So he has five wounds. So you can't shoot him. But you can shoot at the unit of three plus invulnerable saves. That will be minus one to hit. That's cool. <laughs> Worth. <laughs> like, sure, whatever. <laughs> do, do what you want. Let's let's be honest. We're never going to run into each other in a tournament. At best, I'm going to win my first round. You're going to lose because of some weird pairing. I don't know, Dave. You talk about how good you are at this game. I mean, mm -hmm. I assume that I'm going to see you across the One of these the days, I'm going to actually point. just have you give me a list. You, you, and then when I win the tournament, you'll be like, You talk a big game <laughs> when we're not playing or near models. That's true, I do. <laughs> Although, John, I, I have to admit, I am undefeated against you. You are. You are 1-0 and o against me. Still undefeated. I said that. 2-0, and, o. and, o. Two and o actually. Wait, we count Connect 4. The Connect 40K? I count the connect, it. Still counts. <laughs> the most serious of 40Ks. The connecting kind. kind yeah. yeah. No, I, I would like to test out. I would like to play against your list. In fact, uh, yeah. I may... Um, 
I may take you up on your custodes offer to uh, to test out uh, to borrow some bikes and stuff. Sure, because you've got stuff built. That I just I gotta flesh out the I gotta I mean, flesh out my two K list. I don't have a lot built, but yeah, I can. Mm-hmm. I'll Let's, let you borrow whatever I have. Fine, give me all your Death Guard Nurgles. <laughs> Uh, that classic seventh edition Nurgle imperialist. <laughs> mm, yeah, mm, classy, spicy. We're allies. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention that I didn't get to mention last time. Ooh, uh, is that I, due to the my success at the last tournament, I've actually upgraded my rank in the Harlequins ranking to the number one Harlequins player. Um, so is that in the ITC? Son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah, I, I don't have positive noises on this board. No, no, no. That's but... just in the world, <laughs> not just ITC. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, a, it's an that's, itc ranking it's an it's, i was like gonna say it's an itc ranking technically you are no, no, correct no 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 it's it's not just that i mean i've i've transcended all other harlequin players to become literally the best harlequin player in the world <laughs> that's pretty positive john i i thought you didn't have anything positive on here i found a different board <laughs> <laughs> so he has a danny board and a dave board so the Dave board is all the negative. Yeah, dick, they got my dick message <laughs> yeah. and you son of a bitch. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm sorry they're still clapping. Oh, I'm sorry. That was very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you couldn't see me, but I was trying to wave my hands down so <laughs> like, that they please, would stop clapping. Please, please. Yeah, it was yeah. like you just got the nomination for president up there. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Harlequin, I mean, not about the number no, one Harlequin, no. so that's true. But yeah. like, <laughs> not in the world. <laughs> No, technically it's in the world. I've, they play ITC games in other parts of the I world. I mean, yeah, but like it doesn't mean anything. No, right? I mean Not it to means them at least. No, but my fake internet points are pretty good on Harlequins right now. Yeah, I used your fake internet points to get a free Blizzard the other day. So wait, what? dude, that's why I dropped five points. <laughs> I was saving those up for LVO so I could drink for free. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh just going to go up to people like, hey, I'm the number one Harlequin player here. <laughs> Want to get me an ice slushed alcoholic beverage? <laughs> <laughs> and then like the family was like, stop talking to us. <laughs> it was weird that you were at an IHOP. <laughs> it was at the food court. It just reminds me of like, you know, like the memes where like the hookers like I'll do anything for 20 bucks or for 50 bucks. Like, okay, cool. Come play my army for me, and I'm gonna go drink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, you might do better. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> oh man, do I get a laugh Classy. track now? Wow. Yeah, I, I have a laugh track on the podcast. Nice. <laughs> so, so people know when to laugh. Ah, Andy, because uh, they wouldn't know previously. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm. Definitely not. <laughs> the. Uh, so the the thing I'm looking forward to, and I'll probably actually uh, get there, is that the awards are on Sunday, right? They are. Uh, so they'll do like the uh, first place, you know, first through a hundred or however many people win prizes at LVO, okay. and then they, they'll they'll do the uh, presenting of the trophy for faction trophy, right? Sure. And that's based off of your actual ranking, not in not in how you did in the tournament. Right. It's, right. The, it's the end of the ITC season, so it'd be so based off of ranking. I'm I'm gonna be there. Waving my terrible Schvet bands around when you get up when you go up on stage to get your. I don't know if they have a stage. I don't know. Well, let's. See. I'm going to erect a stage just for you. I'm planning it's, on. Playing I'm going to bring a portable ones. stage so that when you win and they call your name, I'm just going to run up there really fast, slap it down so you can walk up it, and then stand above Frankie and Reese. Ooh, I'm going to do that already. <laughs> yeah, but this time you'll be you'll be like dick height to them. They'll be oh, dick height to I you. See. Sorry, okay. no, you won't be dick height to them. Um. Yeah, no, it's not a stage. It's like a really like the neat sports style backdrop with the LVO logo, but it's just on the convention floor. I don't even. I don't think they take your picture though if you're a faction winner. Uh, oh, we you, will. You get given your trophy on a live stream. If it's oh, the same as a couple of years cool. ago. Still, still taking well, okay. pictures of it. So first of all, I haven't won anything yet because like there's still LVO and that's worth a lot of points. Granted, mm-hmm. I am bringing Harlequins to LVO, and I think there will be less Harlequin players now that the fact has come out because or Harlequins good did ones. get hurt pretty hard the, their major gimmicks kind of got abused sure or unabused i should say so yeah. um yeah i don't know we'll see it'll be exciting it'll be fun yeah it will uh we're gonna take a break we'll come on back maybe possibly um just like on your mom who knows nope that's ending the show all right so this has been Mob Rules. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> it's only been two weeks since I've done this. Dude, I'm the best. I took first place at another tournament. First off, stop with the thunder and lightning. You don't impress me. 
And second, let me check out the BCP rankings. And I don't see you on there. What? Your TO needs to download the Best Coast Pairings app and run events on it. After the event, the results are uploaded into BCP rankings, and the best part, it's easy and free. But I play multiple game systems. No big deal. The BCP app can be used for any game. A ton of events every weekend are using it, from major international tournaments to local stores. And now that it's available on Android devices, you're going to have some serious competition. There can be only one. BCP Rankings is a fun and exciting way to measure how you or your team stack up. No matter what you play, your score goes to an overall ranking. Or compete to be the best in a game, a circuit, a region, or the world. Download the app or visit www.bestcoastpairings.com for more info. Best Coast Pairings. Are you the best? Waka waka! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Did you buy this? Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's an old app. Oh, okay, uh, Jesus. But apparently, because that's <laughs> has he been relevant. And, so was oh, that I'm way louder now? Oh no, you should be. Is the that same. Fozzie oh, okay. as? Uh, no, that is oh, a non copyright infringing person saying "wacka wacka." Oh, which is not that's copyrighted. sounds like that's a uh, g- gozi. It's gozi bar. Gozi bar. You can say bear, Dave. Bear is not a trademark. <laughs> bear, is <part. laughs> bear is not trademark. You, you should know all about bears. Uh, I usually don't. I, you know what? I got nothing for that. I knew where I wanted to go with it, which was to say that I usually had to, to you know, drive I them know, off of oh, you. We know where you bear, wanted to but. go with bears, but... <laughs> but, you know, whatever. We're, but we're there's no alley at John's oh, man, house. That's, that's, <laughs> so I had to talk Cody out of a tattoo about 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where he was like, dude... Was it one with like time. an octopus where the butthole is the mouth? No. I, nobody would ever recreate your tattoo, John. Come on, because yeah, it's trademarked. Yeah, it's trademarked. No, he, he I, from here because I have a story about one of those. Well, mm. uh, well, well let's okay. Let's let's Hold hear. On. Let's hear Dave's weird tattoo story first. Right. So he he wanted to get this memorial uh, tattoo. But uh, for his, because uh, he used to spend time with his grandpa down in Cake, Alaska, and there was tons of bears. So he wanted to get a bear paw on the middle of his uh, shoulder blade. <laughs> and I I had to go, yeah, you know that's a symbol for something, right? You should get You'll that. Give it up. And you are that type. You you are a bear. You, you should get it on that. his lower back. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't right know. That sounds tram- like a handhold, step. really. Like where the. <laughs> just, <laughs> just put your hand right here. Yeah. Place hand here. <laughs> All right, now what's, right, what's yours? What's your, yours? Yeah, because well, when you're reminded with anus being an octopus mouth, right. then it's yeah. a good story. Oh, no, there's totally a... I, I saw a local woman of dancing uh, repute up here with that same tattoo. Burlesque or more dirty? Uh, dirtier. Okay. Mm. Good, good, times. good yeah. times. I saw it on the internet. Um, <laughs> before... I saw it in person. Before <laughs> we uh, move on... Uh, talk about uh, Malice, the best Eisenhorn book so far. Uh, let's we we've talked uh, about some of the FAQ stuff already, and Danny had a, had a really nice write up on our Facebook page about the FAQ stuff. Let's go over some of the the kind of major changes and what you're kind of not going to be seeing or seeing on the tabletop going on. Uh, Dave, give sure. us a rundown. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, just put him. Man, on the I don't spot. have notes for this one. Um, so uh, I'm just so, gonna go through what what Danny has down here on his uh, very good little write up. Oh, make on us our turn off our here. phones, and then you go to YouTube or Facebook oh, and pull yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. Look, at I my mean, iPad. Dave, I remember what I wrote, mm-hmm. so I don't. Yeah, know yeah. So, I didn't even read what you wrote. So I just broadcast it to the universe for you because <laughs> it was a good write up. Because I looked at How the end know? and said, I just I read the last paragraph and I went, "That's a good write up." Uh, <laughs> so so we're here uh, concise. Uh, CP regeneration has been somewhat fixed. Is now limited to one command point a battle round, with except with potential exceptions. With a right? couple of exceptions, um, like pregame stuff. So, like for example, my Autark for my Eldar. If I deploy him in the deployment phase, I can still use him to regen multiple points before deployment. Um, and a couple of other examples too. But during the game, uh, regardless of stra- or regardless of warlord traits, um, relics, anything like that, the most you can regain is one per round. Well, kind of. I was going to say there there are a couple of factions that have so the ability Har- to Harlequins can get more than one. So the player in Twilight, 
um, is the warlord trait. And basically, if you roll, you roll a dice every time somebody uses a stratagem. Mm -hmm. If you roll equal to the number of points spent on the stratagem, you get all of the points for it. And that still works, but it only works. You only can do it successfully once per battle round. So if somebody spends three CP on something, you could roll a three and get three. Mm Mm-hmm. But that's so that's more than one. I mean, that's but that's that's still you only only getting back. But but rather once, than doing it but, every yeah. time, right? Oh right. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. You're just oh yeah, it's one. way worse than it was. But it's, I mean, it's, it's still, still a good. chance. It's still good. I was gonna say, yeah, I guess. I I'm really excited to be able to give uh, to not have to take care of Zaquilla and um, the. It does open up list building yeah, again, it, where you don't feel kind of like restrained. Well, uh, you know. Like that bad meme, like, I have a guard battalion, so I must have Kirov's Aquila. Right. You know? Sure. So so that helps. Um, we have some changes, a uh, big change to infiltration and the stratagems and things that kind of come along I like the this. infiltration changes, actually. Um, I'm a fan of most of them. Um, so, like, the Stygie 7. Except the Guardians, or the Rangers one. Uh, yeah, the Stygie 7 stratagem, the Raven Guard, Alpha Legion, is changed to a 9-inch pregame move. Mm-hmm. Um, so you deploy it, and then you can move 9 inches. Um, and then a couple of other things, uh, Eldar Rangers for one, um, got changed to being deep striking. Yeah. I'm a little sad about that. I still think Rangers should have the same role that scouts do. Yeah. Because it changes. So now nerglings and scouts are primo, primo troop, troop choices now. Yeah. So nerglings were already a primo, super nerglings, scouts, stealth suits and, and ghost keels all still get that ability. I heard stealth suits are still Gucci. So. Yeah, as, as yeah. our friend Nate responded to everything we said about the FAQ, Stealth is Gucci, <laughs> which yep. is what the kids are saying it's nowadays. Good, good comeback, I guess. I don't um, know. But what it really stops is... is I don't uh, speak urban. It stops the, <laughs> the, the way kind of either the entire board's being cut off at the start or kind of you, your enemy's right up in your face, turn one. So, you know, again, it's opening up list building a little bit so you don't have to necessarily... All right, so I might face like these seven different things, so I have to have a screen or deploy in a certain way, and kind of freeing it up again. So with a, with a very few exceptions, nobody can get into your deployment zone on the first turn via like infiltration Shit. methods or anything like that. Which I feel like Zeta is good. So you don't have to screen it off as much, except against two, three armies that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh. Some stratagems went up in cost. I was surprised by this. I thought they would hold really? off till no. chapter approved for this stuff. I think I think that's a no. well okay. I think it's an, as an immediate of a problem as it is. I think it needed to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I'm glad that they're willing to make changes to the points on stratagems. I think that that's a really good call. Being flexible with anything, and it seems like they are. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good move on their part. Um, so yeah, agents of act up to four command points, yep. which along with the the change to regenerating command points, uh, makes it still good, but Force way it. less effective. Yeah. yeah, way more. I really got to decide whether I want to use this. Oh, for sure. Not, As opposed know. to just like you know, I played games where my opponent's just being like, "Fact, okay," and then next week, like, "Fact." Right. Well, okay. You know, I would like just, to do something. Yeah. And so that gets its way. Um, <laughs> upon Wings of Fire, uh, your Smash Captain Extraordinaire is now two command points. Yep. Um, and then a bunch of the good night ones, the Order of Companions, oh. Oathbreaker, Missile, Darkest mm-hmm. Eye Hour, are all up to three command points. Uh, combined with the whole, uh, again, reduction of command point uh, yeah. regeneration. There, it, it was very well done to make it so that you know if, if you're playing a full night list instead of just look at me i brought a castellan so rather than saying castellans have gone up to 800 points which screws over people that you know weren't running imperial soup but just to, wanting to enjoy their delicious nights it, it i feel like they did a very a very good job to balance uh positives and negatives to still being able to field that stuff does that make sense? Yeah, sure. and, yeah, for sure. And then we come to kind of the biggest change um, is the changes to the fly keyword. Yeah, I think that is which is huge. Hands sexy. Down the biggest one. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's sexy. I like it. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit already. Yeah, but um, I'm I'm mostly I'm even though I would say it negatively affects the majority of my armies, I I'm fine with the change. I like that the screens become more valid. So. I th- or I even more valid, I should say. You put in your write up here, Danny. The the conscripts are kind of back in the the yeah, picture again. I think, I I mean, think why, why conscripts though instead of just regular troops? massive right. units? Because you can take it's twenty still, in a unit. It's uh, isn't its base unit um, 20. 20. 20 for eighty points though. It's mm-hmm. you can take 
two guardsmen uh, for for eighty as well. Why not okay. just do that? Because you can make all of those all of those guys fearless. They can all benefit from the same buffs. So instead of buffing two Buff. units, you're only buffing one. Granted, you can merge the guard squads together with one CP. So uh, let's so the CP thing for for a second to flashback. Our buddy Taylor runs a uh, brigade. Yep. With this new change to the way that CP regens, would he do you do you think that he would be better off running two battalions for ten points? as opposed to one brigade? I think we're going to see more brigades, to be honest with you. Do you? Because um, it's because you're only getting seven from a brigade as opposed no, to... No, you 12. get 12 from Is it 12? It's 12 yeah. from a brigade now. Seven, then. It used to be 12. Oh. So it used to be three for a battalion, seven for a brigade. And then they... None of us can say brigade. No, no. Brigade. So brigade was are, nine. Are you, was it nine? Brigade? Yeah. yeah. Um, but then they upped nine. it to five and 12. Why did I think it was seven? I have no earthly okay. idea. Yeah. So never mind. Ignore me then. Because in my head, I was Unless thinking you're he's, playing he's Dave. throwing so much more in there for seven as opposed yeah. to doing two at five. Yeah. For, for, forget right. about that. Unless you're so playing you two Dave. Extra. Right. W- unless you're playing Dave who's playing a brigade, in which case remind him at seven. I'm definitely so never going to be playing a brigade. Granted, up. like he has to make some additional expenditures in the in the brigade. Right. To make it That's work. what I'm saying. If you're just doing it to get the CP, why, why not just do two of these? But so it's going to be like, relatively speaking, uh, four hundred points or so. No, not four hundred. Maybe three hundred three, points. It's, it's three sixty for two uh, battalions of guards. Sure. To, to fit that out, but I mean, it works. I think it works really. Would work really well with. Uh, that's the barest minimum. That's no. Heavy well, also, it means like you can only take one detachment instead of two detachments. If right. you're limited to three, is the other benefit there too. But yeah, uh, I said I just wanted to kind of go over some of the um, the the big FAQ changes real quick. Uh, like I said, screens are amazing now for other reasons, mainly protecting you against fly. Yeah, uh, you can move that smash captain into someone's deployment zone as quickly as you want, but you better clear out all the chaff around your characters, otherwise he's or getting just nowhere. Jump over yep. them in the movement phase. Well, on on wings of fire, the the stratagem that lets smash captain move like that puts him like square, and if you spread out with chaff, then ah. there's nowhere for him to go. So I oh, said, and so not only you can't move through models, you have to measure vertical distances when you move on ruins yeah. and stuff too, or charge from ruins. Yeah, charge from or ruins, charge but from not, but you, elevation. You ignore the ruins if you're just going over it. Sure, or so, on top of it. Yeah, right. But yeah, lots yeah, lots of good down. changes. Um, lots of things that kind of open up again army selection, which I think was the every time I see an FAQ from Games Workshop, that's kind of their main goal. I think is to open up army selection. Uh, and I think they start to do major changes when they see the same list over and over and over again. Well, when it was what one third of all lists at at uh, Nova were that the some some variant of guard Castellan smash. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. So Castellans were very popular, and now that they've sold a lot of them, they can make them bad again. Uh, they haven't. They haven't actually made them bad. They haven't made any changes to them really yet. I mean, yeah. Wake me up when December ends is a great Green Day song. And also, I think I, it's September. I think I think Poon Knight's gonna go down in cost, and I think that's a bad Green Day song. And I think Poon, Poon Knight, <laughs> Poon Knight, yes, the worst. Yeah, Poon Knight will go down in cost. Castellan will go up. Uh, Dire Avengers will hopefully go down. Otherwise, I'm go no, up. that'd be good. Yeah, they're going up. Dire Avengers? Yeah. No, dude, they're gonna. Go nah, no one no, takes totally them. Maybe they're going up just because John said it, and it's a well-known fact that Andy. Smiley and, and Pete Foley listen to our podcast because mm, they have to because yeah make sure because we're an orc based podcast yeah. and, and they wanted to, they wanted to hear some good orc based podcast uh, stuff. it's our October oh, first of all can I say a couple I'm sorry if they have to do that. Mm. Like, I'm really sorry. Why are you sorry. pointing at the gluten-free weird beer thing? No, no, I'm that? making numbers <laughs> with my fingers. So, so number yeah. okay. two. Gotcha. Um uh what's up? <laughs> number two is just what's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 C how you doing? The color <laughs> how you the doing? letter the letter purple. The letter purple. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to take one more quick break. I'm going to stop popping levels here real quick. And uh, we're going to come back and talk about Eisenhorn uh, Malleus, which is like brigade. The best of the book. Which is a hard I said brigade correctly. If you're in the Anchorage area and need your hobby fix, head on down to Tier 1 Cards and Games. Whether it's 40K, X-Wing, Attack Wing, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Dragon Ball, Pokemon, War Machine, Age of Sigmar, Malifor, or even Magic... 
the Gathering kind, not the Siegfried and Royd kind. Tier 1 Cards of Games has the space, the players, and products for you to build your forces and destroy your foes. Not in Alaska? Enjoy our snow, suckers. We've got none! And while you're stuck inside, check out Tier 1's live Twitch stream at www.twitch.tv forward slash Tier 1 Cards. Streaming ITC format, 40k starting at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the last Saturday of every month. My name is Beth Davis, and I witnessed it. <laughs> what? I don't know. Uh, I'm just looking at this weird soundboard that I found. What? And that actually worked. The, the, button, <laughs> the button just says, I witnessed it. So I'm like, oh, all right, we'll give that a try. Um, but yeah, so today sure. we're going back to our roots a little bit and really badly and confusingly talking about books. As yeah. a tradition. Yeah. As a tradition. Uh, dangerously enough, when my computer is in the shop, <laughs> we're going to do the episodes that take the most editing. Uh, we're talking about Eisenhorn uh, Malice, which is uh, book two in the Eisenhorn Trilogy. Um, and uh, it kind of follows the further g- adventures of Gregor Eisenhorn. It's the second best Eisenhorn book. It's the second best Eisenhorn book that I will agree with well, both of you. It's the second Eisenhorn book. It's also That's the second sure. best. Uh, I haven't read the Ravener series yet, so I'm not willing to put my stamp of it. Those are, well, well, wait a minute. That's a different series. That's a different series. We can't rate them the same because they're very different. Yes. I will say, um, first thoughts about Malice was Jesus Christ, stop sucking Ravener's dick. <laughs> he just the, really likes Ravener. The man. first third of the book, there was so much verbal fellation of like Ravener. <laughs> it's like we get it. You don't want to write about Eisenhorn. You want to write about Ravener, but they told you to write another Eisenhorn book. No, Come on, dude. He was just really proud of his pupil for the first time ever. I don't know. I just, mm. eh. I mean, it seemed like he was, but that you, I mean, Dan, that's that's the writing. So. It is what it is. So, I mean, until, uh, like, Ravener really develops, like, and becomes his own dude, like, in his own series. So, like, I actually Ravener puberty. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> he reminded me at the start of this book. Uh, so like becomes a Happy Meal. Like Poochie from The Simpsons. You know, like, if Ravener is not on the screen, other characters should ask, where is Ravener? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in, in a box, <laughs> yeah. In in like the, the spoiler the, alert. I'm not that far in the, the book. The yet. Dalek box. You read the book. I know. I know you okay. read the book. God. But yeah, uh, guys. Uh, let's... Besides, in a box is Pontius Claw from the previous book. So so there are, there can be more than claw, one character sorry, in a claw. box. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's like it's a, actually it's a recurring like a bad, theme. It's like a bad <laughs> improv game where only one character, one has to be standing, one sitting, and one in a box. <laughs> Schrodinger's Sorry, Inquisitor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you have one heretic in the box, is it alive or dead? Yeah. Yes. Mm. But yeah, so uh, Malice. So, Danny, why don't you start us off uh, with uh, Malice? Okay. Uh, do you want me just to like sure. start at the beginning? Of the start, start at the beginning. Page one. Hold Let's on. Read it but out loud. Clarify for us the Get proper some... way to say the title. Malice. I mean, that's right. You know why I know that? Because I got the audio audiobook. book. Just like I did. Uh, <laughs> But you kept saying malice, and I was like, "I'm going to say malice." I'm going right? to continue. Was Toby to say Longworth malice. wrong from start to finish every time he said it? I don't know. I didn't listen to the audiobook. But you really should. It's like it's really good. It's it's probably the second best Eisenhorn audiobook of. I've I'll, ever I'll agree to. with that only because Hereticus is better. Yeah, agreed. But anyway, second best I've currently listened to. Okay, Malleus. So all right. Um, it starts off. Did you guys? Does it start off? I, okay, so I bought the. I bought like a special edition of it, so I have like oh, a short story maybe at the bags. beginning. Yeah. What, um, what was your uh, th- short story at the start of? Did, so did edition? it start with you guys? Started? Does it start with uh, the Dark Eldar Lady? Mm, I don't think so. I think it starts. Wait, when you say the Dark Eldar Lady, do you mean um, them chasing the Spider Queen Lady? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That. That's the first so chapter good. of the book. Dude. Oh my god! Wasn't that a great intro? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so that was good. Super red. And so, like it goes in, Eisenhorn has been poisoned by her, po- like her her Dark, Dark Eldar, Eldar trained training, poisoner, yeah. and uh, like it's a Xenos cult, like they're worshiping Dark Eldar. I liked when they said that that the lady was such a heretic that she was recently inducted into the cult of Kayla Mensha Kane, and uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess Dark Eldar probably still like view him in a favorable light. Yeah, I mean, he's the god of murder. They like murder. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway. Um, so he gets poisoned by this guy with the two-part poison, and he hasn't taken the second part of the poison yet. 
or or well, like it becomes activated if he eats or drinks anything no it, so what i like is that they poison him with it but they discovered that he was poisoned and they said oh it's a two part it's like epoxy so you've got right. uh, you got this part yeah. so as long as you don't eat this part you'll be fine so they were testing all of his uh, they were testing all of his water and not letting him eat right they were like we can't test your food so sorry you just can't eat right yeah so he's like starving and dehydrated <laughs> Yeah, like trying to like going to fight this like end boss because right? at any second he could just get you know calcium and die so right? or whatever yeah, whatever sure. the other part was <laughs> calcium. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because it could have been that whatever was the activator, yeah. right? I mean, it could have been that. I mean, I would have made the activator water because. Well, I mean, it had to be a chemical or a, water is a chemical. H two O, Dave. Two hydrogen. <laughs> so one what, what you're saying? What you're saying is they should have made hydrogen the activator, or uh, I don't know, or oxygen. I guess. I mean, so that's he just not dies food. by breathing. That's not that's even better, that's right? Guess, right, yeah. but I, he wasn't trained that well by the Dark Eldar. Anyway, so, but so the so, so the story that you're starting with it, Dave's the, bad torture methods aside. Right. Yes, I wasn't sure if it was a short story that was like an edition because I no, get some I of those sometimes. No, because I think it's actually the start. Like, yeah, it sounds right. Uh, special book. edition, as it's called on Audible, is what we got here. Yeah, right? um, okay. but there's the the brief bit with uh, Cherubal at the very beginning. The the sub. Oh the yeah, yeah. We're, okay. If we're going to be correct, Cherubal. Anyway, no, no. So it's cherry bale. It's cherry bale. <laughs> cherry bale, <sighs> like cherub, right? Yeah, cherub bale. Whatever. Anyway, cherry bale, cherry bale, anyway, cherry pale. Go ahead. Uh, cherry t- pit. Tell, tell us what happens in that name. because it's That's wild so cherry is his new nickname. Wild cherry. I like it. <laughs> wild uh, cherry Pepsi. All right, so Pepsi by L. So uh, the that inquisitor is like doing a bust of some like cult. And uh, Wild Cherry Pepsi takes like takes him down, but like refrains, like kills his whole posse, but refrains from killing the Inquisitor because the Inquisitor is wearing like a gas mask. He takes off the gas mask and goes, "Oh, you're not Gregor," and then like like slashes him across his chest. Right? Yeah. Yeah. After having a conversation with him where he's not responding because he's wounded him, and he's like, "Well, right. sorry, I had to wound you, but I had to make it look I convincing. had to make it look right, didn't I? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Say no more. Say no more. Right." And the, uh, to give him a bad name. Yeah, right. Cherry, Cherry Pepsi's kind of like a crazy ex-girlfriend uh, with Eisenhorn at the start of this book here. Just obsessed with kind of like breaking up his relationship with the Imperium. Yep. I would imagine Cherubiel has like a, a void space he lives in where, uh, you know, he has his pictures of Eisenhorn with the eyes cut out. And they'll never love you like I can. A little hair you. shrine. A little hair shrine. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. <laughs> so he's Cher- Cherubiel Cherubial, Cherubial Bill, is that what it is? Yeah. Ooh, Wild Cherry uh, Bill. Wild, Wild Cherry, Wild Cherry Bill. Bill. <laughs> he's just dancing around and he's skinning right. Inquisitors alive. I've stopped taking notes about what we're calling people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so if we refer to somebody as a flavor and Bill of some type or a flavor of Pepsi, we're probably talking about the demon host. Right. There Except for Profanti, but we'll talk about him later. So so that little tiny bit, like I, I heard that and I had to stop and go back and listen to it again. I was like, this doesn't sound right. What's going on? And then it skips to the, the Dark Eldar Chase, who is an arachnid lady, which she's got like spider limbs and stuff. Right. Uh, and he fights people that are have all like have shadow fields and all this other like I, Dark Eldar tech. Oh, did you get the opinion the opinion that the, the main bad guy of this chapter was a, a male? Because I got no. a, I got no, the, oh, I got okay, a female. It's a chick. Okay. Chick. Spider chick. Without legs. Spider chick. Spider chick. Because an inquisitor chick. cut off her legs, mm-hmm. she, she kind of reminds me of um, the bad guy from Wild West, that terrible uh, Will Smith movie. Okay, first of all, that movie is not terrible. I know it's not terrible, but oh everybody man, thinks it's I terrible. love that movie. No, that's that's a great movie. It I, has one of the greatest theme songs of all time. Oh, Wild Wild West, Jim West, Desperado, Rough Rider. <laughs> wow, none of, none of the six brothers. <laughs> um, so that they he takes his I gotta squad. pull up my audience some more so I can just randomly yeah. boo Dave for his bad opinions <laughs> I, Dave just said he liked it though I actually so, I actually really do like it but it's man it's the pan. banter between the villain and we're Will Smith we're off track is so here good. so bad we gotta save this for our Will Smith Wild Wild West podcast <laughs> I forgot about that yeah. one yeah we Salamander meet on Wednesdays Will West. um so, so the, you leave the the spider oh. lady is he, they're engaging and trying to get in there and he's got Ravener with him right he does, and this was a, this was like beautiful our, Ravener, our his time. most promising student of all time, with luscious hair, with and his, his thick mu- luscious hair, and his little mutant bodyguard. The uh, yeah, the mutant bodyguard. Forgot all about that guy because he dies so fast; it's not even funny. So he has a model. 
Did you know that? I he do does. Now. Yeah, he has a he, he has a Inquisitor model. Ravener or the no the mutant. Well, both. Mm, oh, nice. So, <laughs> all right. So it also turns out that Ravener has been doinking some some badass assassin oh. chick, kind of a well, moderate. Well, she's not an assassin. assassin. She's like a she's a just a swordsman. Sword. With like a four sword. I think you'll find Ravener is the swordsman, swordsman. in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Beth Davis, and I witnessed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Got him. Oh we're going to get sued yeah. by Beth Davis after yeah. this. Yeah. Beth, did you hear on some shitty podcast? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so so they go into the, they're going to the catacombs to try to uh, discover her, and Ravner's out there like setting off. Our, uh, uh, it he's was scouting. Ravner, right? Yeah, yeah. Ravner's doing all the scouting, which was weird Because he's just an Why? interrogator at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But well, that's like that's... the second highest ranked member of the war band. Yeah. 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 But it's not. Just an interrogator. It's not the kind of thing you would think somebody uh, of a scout. Well, they can't verbally really? suck his dick if he doesn't do all of this cool extra stuff to help them. Yeah. Well, the dick sucking stops he, shortly. He has a, he has a shoulder mounted psi cannon. No, no. I'm... And like, he's a yeah, badass. A, shul- a, sh- a shoulder mounted psi cannon is not the kind of thing you think of when you're thinking of stealth. Hold on. Fuck you, Predator. Dude, he's That's got you. That's not a side cannon. The Predator has the a shoulder-mounted cannon. Yeah. The plasma caster is basically the same thing as a shoulder-mounted So are, are you basically cannon. telling me that Abnett stole Ravener, and in his head as he was writing him, it was just a Predator with a human face? I think, no. I think Predator was on in the background when he was writing it, but... <laughs> no, John Blanche stole the idea from Predator, clearly. Because he's a no-talented Ravner? hack. <laughs> and so, wow! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> oh, uh, wrong you. <laughs> Why did you say Spicy. something so Spicy. controversial and yet so brave I and didn't... true? I don't, know I don't like. Anyway, I, I will disagree uh, with John Burns being a no talent hack, but that's because I grew up looking at that. Right? I, I, me I, too. I, no, you didn't. He, John Burns was like ninety by the time he even started looking at Corey Pace stuff. <laughs> He's alive right now on his throne of gold, being fed a thousand psychers every day. Uh, is he still alive? He's John still Lynch? alive, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. And he listens to this podcast, <laughs> oh. so... <laughs> sorry, Shit. D- sorry, John. Number one, <laughs> not sorry. Number two, what up? <laughs> Number three, I love your art. <laughs> I love art. I feel um, I feel that your work in the Demon Codex really oh. brings that army to life. Oh, man, you got to mute down. Because there's no model pictures in there, just beautiful inquisitorial art from crazy people having seen demons. I like it. It's perfect. Everything a codex about demons should be. All right. Stop. <laughs> Just stop. We're moving on <laughs> to talk about the Dark Eldar Spider Lady because we, I mean, this is like a one chapter in this book. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're going to, this is a three hour podcast tonight. Yeah. Oh, get fuck. get your big boy pants on. You're in for the long haul with this I one. need more beer. Because <laughs> you did not, you literally did not read this yesterday like I did. So it's completely all fresh up here except right. for the part. Well, yeah, I, I finished on to. Saturday. You've read it multiple times yeah. before, though. But yeah, actually, sure. You should have all this keep, knowledge. Keep going, going. Keep going. We, we got this. We're good. We're good. All right. So <laughs> they kill this lady, right? After a big fight. She wasn't even that tough seeming. Actually, so the homunculus was a badass. Yeah. Because he took the down. The poisoner guy. Yeah. No. No, no, no. no the homunculus. There's a homunculus. The poisoner guy jumps out of the oh, shadows right. as, as Eisenhorn is chasing after the spider lady and stabs him with the second part of the poison. Which was... You know, milk was milk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> milk. Turns out the secret ingredient was milk. <laughs> what it was awesome. syringe based <laughs> milk. <laughs> Just jumps out. It does a body good, Eisenhorn. <laughs> <laughs> There's the so, tricks, rabbits. Last fuck you. <laughs> and I forgot how I we forgot killed. about the homunculus. Yeah. The, so the homunculus like kills the the swordsman chick and Ravener like is like oh he flips was out. He fucking murders the shit out of like two people. The swordsman right. And, oh, he kills the the mutant. Yeah. And the guardsman too, I think, because the mutant uh, had a special level to him. So, uh, like the guardsman cuts Ravener, and the mutant flies into a rage and is like, ah, and runs into him, barreling him down, and then he's just like stabbed dead. Sure. Well, the, yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway. no, the mutant, not Ravener, the, but but yeah, the chick going down. I was like, wow, all this talk about how awesome she was with the blade and how she was testing it and everything else. She's just like dead. Well, she's fighting against an Eldar. That makes Her, sense. Uh, yeah. Their, their reactions it's are a master race than their humans. Uh, Ang, Ang Harad. Yeah. Dave, I see What's your page name? of notes. You have like literally a third names. of a page. A few Ang, names. Angrod in relation to Aranarod, which comes in in the Ravener series. Ooh, spoilers. Mm. 
<laughs> Hashtag no spoilers, Danny. It's, it's all circular. It's a it shared universe. Together. Yeah, it feels. And do you like know it. that Ravener is tied to the Grey Knights book too? Yes. Uh, that that is, yep. is, is he the one that tells him to murder all the sisters of battle and bathe in their blood? To you'll win? just oh. you'll have to, you'll wow. have to read the book to find out, John. Mm-hmm. I guess. I guess. It's good I thing will. I bought that yesterday, and also the, uh, the, you bought the Emperor's uh, gift, heretic uh, hereticus. Her, uh, oh, wait, oh, the did you buy book. Ravener or did you buy Her- hereticus? I bought both. Because I was like, screw it. I know which direction we're going. I'm not going to be looking for this book on the Sunday that I'm supposed to be reading it because I don't want to read it on my phone. That's right. So anyway, so he gets stabbed with the second part of the poison. Uh, they, they take care of a couple of your boyos. He, he dies a bunch of times. He dies a bunch of times. That's what they said. They have to bring but he was back. still alive, so. Well, they brought him back. Yeah. I mean, it's the 41st not, Is millennium. it really dead if they're bringing you he back? He was I mean, weak as a kitten, as he yeah. said. Yeah. That was true. It was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> they brought him back with string and a yarn. Yeah, a yarn ball. I was yarn say. ball. Don't you die on some me. milk and a laser <laughs> out and a laser and drink milk out of a cu- out of a cup. The which only, is the only cure. Milk, milk injected, bad. Yeah. Milk drank, good. The cure. <laughs> well, shit, to I want to see you if I inject you with milk. You're probably going to just see me punch you in the head because it'll be just, <laughs> first off. I'll be like, what the fuck? Just wait, Dave. Just wait till Vegas. Well, he's not going to be in Vegas. Yeah, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> So so as long now as you scream, this is for my sandwich. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're twenty minutes into this book review, let's move on to the main book and not the prologue from the special <laughs> edition. Well, it was. I mean, I guess it was. Uh, all right. So the the well, the the prologue and the special edition uh, ends with him going dead, and then he gets up and he's they're traveling on the ship and training while he's making the journey back to his home planet. Yeah. Because it, the, well, the actual they got summoned. Story. They got summoned to the 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 big ass parade to celebrate the the promotion. But didn't he go to his uh, his own domicile that he rented first with like a cook and when chefs he and when he got when he gets there? But yeah, the reason yeah, like, heading, I don't follow your shit. I'm gonna go back. The reason to my house I think first. the thing I loved was like he was sitting there on his ship on the way back to his home planet, and his assistant who he well, it's not his home planet. But it's oh home yeah, base. but yeah, his home base. Yeah, his assistant who he. Fucking hates like as much as he loves Ravener, he oh, hates Alan the, Von Beg. Von Beg, he hates him with a passion. He's like, well, uh, this is your schedule for the next week, and it's just like jam packed with shit the whole time. And he's just like, nope, I'm not gonna do that. I might do this, but I'm not he's, gonna do that. Yeah, he looked at the he looked at his emails and he went, spam, 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 <laughs> spam, ooh, spam. It's kind of like me yeah. looking at my work emails and it's like meeting, meeting, web meeting. Oh, I can miss that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I like, so it was at this part of the book that I really started to lose interest um, because it felt like uh, the first book didn't feel like this, but the, the amount of descriptors going into everything else that was happening, I was like, dear God. Well, to me, that's like an Abnett trait is the first third of a book that Abnett does. And this is from comics and, and novels as well is very world buildy. And it kind of it gets Didn't less d- as it goes on, but it's kind of it's like it's setting a solid foundation for the rest of the book, so he doesn't have to be quite as descriptive later on. I yeah, feel. except they're literally at home base for like twenty minutes and then they leave. I didn't need fifteen of those minutes to be descriptors of how cool home base is. To be fair, not. they go back to home base. They go back to home base later on, and he has to describe it less because there's action at that point. So, so I like said so that's just kind of a style of, of Abnett stuff. Did I miss a chapter? I don't remember them ever going back to home base. Yeah, we're not we're not talking we're, about this. We're, book. We're, 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 Come on, man! Spoilers. Oh, is, is, is I just that bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh man, it's gonna be tough. All right. Uh, well, no, they talk about it. They talk about it. Oh wait, no, he doesn't because they. No, he closes it. Yeah, he closes it. Done. That's right. Yeah, yeah never mind. They don't go back. Away. So he's got uh, Beckwin at the house with his, with uh, the distaff, right? Is that what they they were called? The, yeah, the distaff. Yeah, the the distaff uh, are part of a wing of his home, but kind of separate. But he he it, so this book is set a hundred and some odd years since Xenos for everybody that's read it. That sounds yeah, it's, it's, correct, a, it's a hundred or hundred. It's it's a long well, it's, it's like hundred and six or something like yeah. that. So just just so you know, it's set very far ahead. So all the characters that you knew, you know, are still there, obviously except they're not plus some new ones yeah um, at, like all of his household staff you were i was like he's got a giant household but he's got uh, a retinue uh a, a beckwin has built herself up a a blank squad right if you will yeah it was like they have like 50 of them yeah the living greatest in that collection of blanks pretty yeah. much found yep and, and so then he has so his pilot has died in the mean in right. the so, intro so betancourt has died and he got himself a new pilot whose name is Betancourt. Betancourt, right. His daughter. Okay. Because <laughs> that threw me for a loop. 
not reading the book. I was just listening. I'm sitting there like Betancourt is still alive. And, I, and then he says, Medea Betancourt. And I went, I'm, that's not the right name. What's going on? It's because it was Midas in the first one. Yeah. yeah. So. And so he's got him. He's got Amos still. Still Amos his bro. Still around. Mm-hmm. Amos is still around. Um, F- uh, Fishig is still around. Oh, yeah. Fishig is. But well, you don't, But not there because no, Fishig they, is doing his own thing. Right. right. Yeah. You don't you don't know that he's still around. Right. Right, but we we go back to his house. Uh, we kind of lovely we, meal, lovely meal. We look around, um, and that's when he gets snuck up on uh, by one. On fact, no, isn't this the one where he has so, the nude scene? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so first, his head of security says, "Hey, somebody's tried to break in a couple times, right? Yeah. Whose name you don't need to know. Yeah. Like, well, it's again. Kersher, but it comes in like he's in the maybe, oh, maybe later you need books. to know it. So uh, it's in Ravener. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no. Oh God! Anyway, so so, uh, so he says, yeah, there's been some break-ins. So they talk about he he did a bug sweep and found a bunch of bugs, and they determined that they were made by their Inquisition bugs. They're very high high tech, like super high tech. Right, right. Oh, and he gets some emails saying like from his friends like Titus and Dor and stuff like he wants to hang out, um, like come over for beers or but whatever. He, but he uses uh, Eisenhorn's code. Right, right. Anyway, so Q Knight. Right, nighttime. Like nighttime comes, and so uh, Eisenhorn gets like a bad feeling or something like that, and goes to the kitchen. And Medea skipped dinner and is like in a sexy nightshirt, like pulling chicken wings out of the fridge or something. I'm not sure. And yeah, she was, Ravner, she was, like she, she's pulling out several phallic shaped meats. <laughs> anyway, Ravner or uh, sorry, Eisenhorn kicks open the door, like his towel falls off. <laughs> He's naked and scares the shit out of her. It's like, hey, freeze. And she's like, dude, I'm just eating some chicken or whatever. <laughs> and so then Nail comes in. By the way, Harlan Nail is like another one of his underlings who's like a fucking badass. Mm. Um, and he goes, oh, man, I didn't know you were so keen on her. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've got a boner. <laughs> I assume that was, I mean, assumed he had yeah, a boner going there, on. There was a subtle boner reference. Yeah. God, you know, there's something there. magical about the way Toby Longworth says boner, by the way. It was just, <laughs> kept put, I was totally immersed at that point. <laughs> But then she, they realize that there's... She Eisen's horns chub. <laughs> <laughs> His imperial eagle, if you will. Yeah. Anyway, so so they, so they Harlan goes, no, there's actually been a break-in, guys. Like, get get your shit together. And so they go try and take out this guy who's in a, you know, a stealth, heat, suit. stealth suit, basically. And uh, Medea ends up taking him out after he kicks a shit out of Naked Ravener and Harlan for a minute. And uh, I, Eisenhorn. Yeah, I'm sorry, Eisenhorn. Sorry, because Ravener would never have lost. No, Ravener wouldn't have wo- lost. At least, by the way, yeah, he's old. he's yeah he, he was sleeping. He needed his beauty sleep <laughs> for his beautiful probably, high cheekbone face and long lustrous hair. Sad that he lost his swords woman. Uh, he was depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so they they subdue the guy in the stealth suit. Yeah, and it's actually Betancourt that subdues him by with like a kick to the face, and then she's holding a gun, on, a kneel pistol, right? Yeah, sure. she because she's yeah, that's, what, a, that's a, what she that's what she rocks. Yeah, yeah. So she's just like oh. her dad. I guess the apple doesn't fly far from the tree. Oh, fly apples far! Don't, God damn it! Apples don't. She's fly, a pilot, Dave, but hmm. apples don't fly. It's a <laughs> it's a shitty joke. John. Go get me an apple, John, and I'll show you. <laughs> I'll take that one. It was a terrible joke. <laughs> so so they subdue her. Or subdue this person, and I'm expecting to see like it be, you know, oh, the serious uh, well, assassin cherry bill. from the. Uh... <laughs> nah, it's too early in the book for Cherry Cherry Bill to show back up. Oh no, uh, I was expecting Cherry Pepsi to show up real early in this book here. Well, he did right at the very beginning. Well, as a like, you don't show the bad guy at the start of the Fast like, and the Furious movies, and then like show him like throw him away. But yeah, so they they yeah. unmask him, and he's really pissy about it because it's one of Eisenhorn's buddies. The one that one of the ones that sent him a yeah. message was like, "Let's hang out." Titus Endor. So uh, old school. They've been friends since they were interrogators together and under Inquisitor Hopshant. I think mm. is his name. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. That's a good memory. I like that. Um, but but he comes to to Eisenhorn with tales of warning. The, the people are out to get him. Oh, man, and, is that what you got from that? Because I have discredit him. All I heard was that he wanted to drink all of Eisenhorn's booze. Well, he is a drunk. I mean, there is a little bit of that as yeah. well. If you, like, some of the short stories and some of the other things, like, really, he's definitely, like... There was the one where, like, he got blackout drunk and was just a really shitty general and got 30,000 people killed. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> it's not that many in the grand scheme of things but it was enough to 
to get him like a slight demotion. To Inquisitor. To, 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 <laughs> guy, to guy breaking into Eisenhorn's house. He went from starring role to bit part. So anyway, he says, yeah, a bunch of people have said some shit about me. And one of the demon hunters like cornered me and asked me questions about you. And I gave you a glowing review. He, Yeah, I like that he was... You know Just what? like he I did was, with your uh, parole officer, Dave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> um, I, I like the, the way he described that interaction with the, the 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 hunter was that he made it seem like I was free to leave, but I was a hundred percent certain I was not free to leave right, at exactly. any point until I, until he was satisfied with my answer. So, so yeah, and so they talk for a little bit and had do some toasts that they do regular uh, from their olden days back in the pub, but so and so place. You know that they described, but uh, drink them and sink them, and let's have another. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But more, but more grim dark, right? And, and then he leaves, never to be seen again in the rest of the book. That's, no, he's, he's back later. Yeah, um, yeah. He, yeah, but he's still just literally bit part, bit part, bit part. No, I mean he's he's the catalyst for the plot, right? For he's he, the MacGuffin. He, kind no. of sort of, no, 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 not the MacGuffin. No. Anyway, so the myth, the slash at the beginning is the MacGuffin. Yes, the, I let you live. Oh, one of the other messages that Eisenhorn received was a coded message in Glossia from a contact in Cadia saying that they had maybe found something. So that becomes important later. Because on. Right. they they mentioned that Eisenhorn has been searching for Cherry Pepsi for right. 150 years or like however long it had been, like ever since the events of Xenos. He's been hunting him down and trying like obsessed like wants with to kind banish of him. Yeah. banishing him yeah. for like a hundred years. So. And he found some information at Cadia, and I kind of felt like I do, like in a like in a Marvel movie, you know, when like you have a cameo from another superhero. I'm like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah, like, yeah, like, kind of so right. I, I got a message from Cadia. I'm like, oh, I know that place. <laughs> yeah. So that, but that part doesn't. It, the message it, is he dismisses it. He's like, hmm, okay, I've got it. But I also have this. He's got to go. Um, to a fucking parade. To a giant ass parade well, because they're requiring it. So before he goes to the parade, he has to meet with his inquisitorial grandmaster. And the grandmaster asks him a bunch of questions. You like, hey, I've heard some shit about this. It's his daddy. You yeah. can call him that. <laughs> yeah. Grand, <laughs> granddaddy Rokin. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite wrestler. And uh, <laughs> and uh, he uh, <laughs> he's like, hey, so we've been hearing the, some rumors about you that you're a piece of shit and you're hanging out with D- with Wild Cherry Pepsi and like demon hosts. And, and this is a Coke household. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is <a> Coke planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And so, Not like, that new coke either. Yeah, you need to like get your shit together, because uh, I don't want to see you go full Crystal Pepsi. And, mm, yeah, you never want to go tab clear. No, <laughs> which would be the Coke of equivalent, right? <laughs> so, so coke he, ice. he like asked him outright, doesn't he? He's like, are, are you doing this? And he's like, no, I'm no. And have you season. have you heard anything about yeah Cherry Bale? And he goes, no. And he's and Eisner says, and that was the one time that I lied to him. Yeah. <laughs> Because he, he got that message from his contact in Cadia about him potentially being a link. Yeah. Cherry Bale has been spotted on Cadia. Maybe. Or some stuff with There's there some news about him on, on Cadia. Yeah. So now we have uh, him going up and kind of doing the, the giant thing with all of his buddies. Uh, has to go on a parade. That, on it's, Thrace, right? On it, Thrace. Yeah. Thracian Prime, right? Yeah. yeah. Thracian Prime. Uh, is to celebrate the promotion of a new uh, like Lord Commander, right? Uh, yeah, and so like the sector governor is promoting him to the same level as him, mm-hmm. like something. It's like a big deal. He might become a high lord. Yeah, like it there's could, a bunch yeah, of rumors. Has potential and, for him to be a high lord because he did so well quashing some rebellion and then the, <laughs> right. something. And then the big the big part of this is as part of the the thing that like earned him his promotion is he managed to capture like thirty alpha level heretic psychers. Oh my god. Which is a huge deal that like right. so many super powerful psychers got captured at like at once by this guy, and as soon as I heard that part, I'm like, Let's, "Oh, that's not going to end well." Yeah, I was, was like, "That's <laughs> that's not going to end well." He was he was on the ship that was by the planet that captured them, but it w- it was the other it was, it was three the three inquisitor. inquisitors, yeah. Inquisitor Lyco, um, Inquisitor Heldane, Heldane, which was from the last book, yep. and also Commodus Voke. Yeah, was also from, from the last book. And then yeah. Voke, who was supposed to have died. Right, because he's like, hey, if, if I don't live, make my, my make Heldane, Heldane uh, my, in my a, friend. An inquisitor. Yeah, yeah an inquisitor. sign for him. And he's like, okay, yeah, whatever, I will. And then... Bastard has, lived. Has Heldane yeah. been modified at this point in time? Yeah, he's all weird. He's not as weird as he is when he appears in Gaunt's Ghosts. 
Uh, but he's still pretty. He's good. on his way. Yeah. yeah. Getting he's his looking horse a little face. horsey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we have this beautiful, this beautiful march of imperial might of and you know tanks and Some troops and rah rah and just like m- like warlord titans and like yeah. cavalry on giant like all sorts of tanks I don't know, water buffalo Everything. or something yeah there's no oh no no there, yeah though. not yeah the the planet um the groks of the planet sorry they're like auto kathirs or something yeah, like yeah. That. hippos yeah battle sure. hippos battle hippos we'll just call them that yeah, yeah. and uh and then finally Bringing up the rear is the, like a big flatbed truck. <laughs> with, yeah, with, with these alpha level psychers in bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Little, little they're, void they're showing fields. off, and then right. like so. Now I'm like, wait, you don't capture that many psychers that easily. Uh, oh no, why are you parading them all through the town? So people could throw rotten fruit on them, dude. Yeah, that's what you do. It's a shame. So, for so they shame. have 32 uh, alpha level psychers uh, sedated uh, and <coughs> shielded S- away. Supposedly, yeah. Wink, wink. Sh- sedated. Um, and then they come to this massive arch, which I kind of picture as like a giant grim dark arc de triumph. It yeah, was, it was an totally. honor to an, an, a dead admiral. Right, right. And Eisenhorn makes the comment that he's like, I didn't even like the admiral. So he's about to go underneath and then suddenly stops. He gets the sudden urge to, to stop and light a candle. Yeah, and like pay his respects to him. Yeah, which is which saves his ass because at totes. this point a bunch of imperial navy ships fly down they think the uh, like doing a flyover like yeah blue they're angels. Doing, i was gonna say blue angels they're yeah. like the blue angels are doing tricks and stuff like wingtip to wingtip and then one of them like wobbles and hits all the other ones in like a domino effect kind of and like fucks them up and a bunch of them yeah. crash crash the into two, the crowd uh two it, of them crash into the bridge right sure one of them the crashes that, to the spot where eisenhorn was literally going to be yep. in like three and where seconds. ravener is or where ravener is so ravener's dead so that's good he doesn't because we didn't point. like him yeah ravener, he doesn't he doesn't know ravener he's dead is fucked up no eisenhorn point. doesn't no, know i'm just saying dead. well ravener point, doesn't know either in the story yeah i was like ravener doesn't know he probably um, knows if he was dead the arch is destroyed and then it's chaos and then random people start attacking out of the crowd towards him and it's just commotion and chaos right. everywhere well, so the way the way that I like it, this, this is an amazing battle scene. By the way, it's just, really well, it's really out. good, yeah. And it was laid out amazingly in the way that it's uh, said. But the the lightnings that didn't crash because two of the six or however many were in, for, in formation loop back slowly into an attack run on and like strafe the on crowd, strafe everybody, and then pandemonium just goes nuts. People start going crazy. Also, we have uh, the Astartes are there. Oh yeah, there's, oh, a, yeah, there's yeah. like a the white chapter. Right? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's um, um, it's uh, Aurora chapter. Yeah, yeah Aurora. Aurora chapter. And By the way, according to this, the way that Dan Abnett tells it, Aurora white chapters. Consoles, maybe mm, I don't remember. Uh, there's fun. two. There's but two. They were they were part of capturing the the, the third yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But the the way that Abnett tells it is they're just a bunch of bitch ass pussies because uh, they're all Supreme successors. So yeah, Seriously? he's right. Oh yeah, no. They, they, every time he describes them, every time Toby Long, maybe Toby Long would just put like inflection into it. He's like, and then a half body of an Astartes flew by dead, and it's like, it's like well, they're just getting yeah. murderized left and right by alpha level psychers, I, I'm, dude. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. I mean, like, I, all right, I'll give them a pass this time. Like, we all know that Ultramarine successors are little bitches. Like, mm-hmm. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah, a yeah, bitch is right. bitch. Yeah, bitch is a bitch. Sorry, Nick. So. <laughs> No, um, I'm sorry, GW intern who has to listen to us. <laughs> you know, that guy probably actually enjoys his job. Oh, yeah. Because we're pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we're funny. Yeah. My mom does. <laughs> yeah, I, I know she does. My mom does not appreciate <laughs> this podcast. We all, laugh actually. together. <laughs> um, she appreciates other things. So so they get a, they get a pass because it's alpha level psychers. So basically the, the, the bubbles get popped by the straping. Right. And the alpha level psychers are suddenly all free. Right. And go just start causing absolute havoc. Like one of the cavalry mounts just like suddenly like dies and reanimates and like starts charging people. There's Titan shooting at like the, the lightnings and stuff and knocking them out of the sky. Which causes them to then blow up into the crowd. Hold on. Hold on. So this is the one part about this whole scene I didn't like. You got a warlord Titan that uh, so they're, they're, everybody's trying to hit the hit the lightnings and bring them down. And okay. when the warlords suddenly are like, fuck you guys, we'll just do it. So they turn around and they start lighting them up and they blow up a lightning and the shrapnel pieces from the lightning that's left that's flying cleave off the Titan's head All right. and the Titan explodes. Now, you're telling me that uh, Imperial Guard lightning can take down a warlord Titan by crashing into it? Have you seen the size of a lightning compared to the head of a warlord? 
Because the lightning sizable. is like twice as big, at least, than the head of the warlord. It's huge. Oh, yeah, dude. In comparison. For sure. I'm just saying. It's, a lightning it's, is like this big. That's really helpful for our podcast listeners. It, it's, well, I'm showing Dave. Yeah. It's like a foot by a foot. It, I, I'm just saying that they've got that. shield. they got void shields. they got all sorts. they got, they got stuff to prevent that sort of you thing. You know, from not happening. melee attacks from a plane crash into their head. Dave, I think you know, 9 11, bro. It's still. <laughs> Dave what? shakes wow. his head. <laughs> I will say, if you if you roll a six Oof. when you explode, then you cause mortal wounds to everyone around you. You know what? Void shields don't stop. Uh, actually, yeah, except that sh- it, sh- sh- <laughs> <laughs> they don't stop mortal wounds. I, I'm just saying it, it. It took me out because I found it really hard to believe that this plane with this fast no. attack fighter lightning. I, I literally have something. Shrapnel that, pieces was able to cut off the head, but I, that's just. I have a Valkyrie over here, which is about the same size, and I have a Warlord in the living room, and I'll show you. I'll demonstrate by the difference. Okay, I mean the light. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> into Josh's but Warlord's he, head. He blows. He blows it up, and a piece of it flies into it, cleaving off the head. Take the wing off and see if you can cut the head off. That's that's what I I heard. Oh, I guarantee I you, I will cut the head off that Titan with the wing of a of a Valkyrie. Well, it's, it doesn't like it doesn't belong to any of us. So go ahead and do. In fact, Danny, use that that Valkyrie right there. Smash the Valkyrie. Hey, here, take put the it wing. on the table, and I'm gonna hammer that thing with the Valkyrie. Yeah, this this part. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Here, just, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just slam the wing. Yep. Man, that God, really did it. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not. It's, uh, science proved, actually. I stand corrected. But it absolutely could, is what we're trying to say. So right. shut up, Dave. Right. Um, That's fair. D- hashtag Dave sucks. I think one of the best parts of this battle scene is the part where Eisenhorn is kind of like stumbling around trying to help. And he comes across this child <laughs> that he's oh, trying yeah. to save. And there's an Aurora chapter Marine beside it. And he's like, like holding the child, holding right? the child, like come to me. And then Eisenhorn's like, you fucking idiot. That's an alpha level psycho. <laughs> look, look at the ankle of the tattoo. Yeah. The malice brand. Yeah. The malice brand. And then um, he, <laughs> the child then mind controls Eisenhorn to shoot a Marine in the head. Yep. Which he does. Well, it was a death watch bolt pistol. So it makes sense. It's pretty good. It's pretty pistol. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> good. Not a Laz pistol. Pew. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> just bounces off but yeah so like just it's going completely insane oh yeah um the aurora companies that are there are devastated um like i said i think you said it right where there's another space marine uh, chapter there yeah the troops there are devastated it's just destruction all oh, around man, super bad um and then the, they don't so much win the battle as all of the alpha level psychers escape or are i mean so, yeah like eisenhorn kills like three or four of them yeah a solid 10 percent right of sure. them there which is still which very is better impressive. than anybody else yeah. did so and so the city's under siege for many days like with just rioting and like general looting loot yeah it's, it's just it's like the general thing where people are are happy like quote unquote happy with the imperium until they're given a reason not to and then they'll just riot the shit out of it sure until they're Ex- pacified ex- again except for the rich people who have you know serious fortifications yeah high spires yeah and so uh so they kind of break the inquisitors up into task forces like immediately With and so they remaining marines right and like go to these various like hot spot locations and so they find a psyker whose name is is Herodon? is that right Sheridan? Um, uh, uh, Isidon? I don't is that it I think it's, it's something at all right at all. yeah it's like he's, Abaddon but with like Ezekiel at the front kind yeah. of it's a weird name anyway yeah. he, he's a he, he's a major linchpin in the story right with, despite never meeting him really no, we yeah, no, we yeah, don't. Yeah. Not even one, really. Yeah, once. you do at the end. He, I thought. No, he's 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 just a body in a cage. You're right. I mean, we don't know that it's him. That's true. Because they just say there's a bunch of cage. Anyway, so, um, so basically, he's taken over. Like he's set up. He's he's under siege in a like a rich uh, trading family's household, mm-hmm. and he's controlling the mobs. He's like basically my because he's a, a telepath. So he's controlling these people from like all around the various like hab blocks, forming them into crowds and rushing like the imperial like authorities. And so, uh, Eisenhorn gets there with Voke, right? Yeah, and also uh, uh, another inquisitor. Uh, yeah, I forgot and his, his name. And his interrogator. Though. Yeah, is Shanabel. Yeah, um, and then also uh, Heldane is there too. 
Well, yeah, because where Vogue goes, Heldane goes. So Sure. Well, Heldane was already there, and he's, like, making this stupid plan. And he's really shitty at his job. Right. So He's so bad. Yeah. And so, like, he tries to, like, give some orders via te- telepathy, and Eisenhorn's like, you're a freaking idiot, dude. What are you doing? That guy's a psyker. And Heldane's like, look, look, old man. Like, <laughs> he can read the he's, thoughts of every person in this entire city. So, like, I'm really not worried about giving, like, a little bit of a mind pulse to somebody. Yeah, but he, he didn't say it with words. He snorted and then stomped his hoof twice. Right, so. yeah. Well, and that equi- and that's equivalent to right. what I just said, basically, yeah. in, in man whore speak. <laughs> which, which you're very fluent in man whore. <laughs> well, that's dude, what I... Boy's got to make a living, man. I almost spit liquid everywhere because that's what i thought you said and that's why Does he, the, uh, that's so why the is helting a brony up. what's that is well, helting a brony man maybe he's but a he can we not he's a grim dark furry <laughs> yeah kind of right where they've evolved past fur <laughs> just turning himself i'm gonna start calling him rainbow dasher twist that's the name of my yeah, rainbow, rainbow dasher yeah all right rain dane so they break rain into the they, they break into the house <laughs> Uh, yeah, they finally they get oh, through the void shields. They just start murdering yeah, they can't their, get through the void yeah. shields, right? So Eisenhorn has to crawl in the sewer with a space marine, right, as backup. And they're like trying to disconnect the power. So they're going to blow up the power cell because they can't disconnect it because so many people are coming and attacking them. And so they're like, "All right, well, we'll just blow it up right here." And they're like, "The space marine's like, dude, you're going. We're all going to die." He's like, "No, we're going to blow like, it now. We got to." I don't it now. care. We have to do it, or else he's going to win. And so they blow it up. And the space marine shields them and dies, but saves all the lives of, of, the, Honor commu- before of the inquisitors. Smarts, yeah, yeah. So good, good bro there. Good, good bro. Guy. He died doing what he loved, dying. dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they get into the house, uh, and a, a fight with this guy kind of ensues a little bit. Sure. Um, and they, uh, but this time he brought his blank, so it was a little safer, right? No, he no. didn't have a blank. No, no, he didn't want Beckman oh, anywhere. Stupid. He Beck, oh, Beckman was yeah, back yeah. with the rest of the blanks at, at Safe House. That's right. My bad. And so, like, he goes, him and the other Inquisitor with the Shanabel, like, go into the house to like f- to find this guy and fight him, because um, right. Voke and Heldane are outside killing civilians, like you do, right? Slaughtering them. Yeah, yeah. So. They're going there. Freaking they end up fighting wrap. these car- cargo servitors that have been mind controlled. Oh yeah, because when the void shield pops, it like creates a, a minor like null it's, zone. S- yeah. So the, what they they liken telepathy, or t- his telepathic abilities, to being uh, to electronics in the way that it's being studied, and so they created an EMP pulse, basically. Right, and it knocked knock it, it out. out. Yeah. Which, it, yeah. So they end up fighting these cargo servitors, right? And one of the cargo servitors kills the Inquisitor while Shanabel is like crying and shooting at him. And Eisenhorn kills both of them because he's a fucking badass. Yeah. Doesn't even look In a nutshell, explosion. that's what happened, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, as soon as they get outside, the the Inquisitor Lyco is there with, like, stormtroopers. And there's a there's a dude standing there, like, who they assume is a Sheridan. They blast him with a plasma rifle, cook him to, be, like, burn him up into, like, yeah. nothing. And you're like, well, this was a weird... And so if you're reading along, you're kind of like, well, that... That was anticlimactic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so is the book over then? It's, it's like the siege of Alpha the level, palace. And yeah, then. Alpha level psychers are done. Good, got it. What's next? Let's go to Cadia. But, you know, they don't. Well, there's one step before we go to Cadia, right? Yeah. Small step. The best step of the book, in my opinion. Ooh. So, they... No, go ahead, Dave. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, so that they go back to their... The, the mansion to, to shut it down, basically. Right, he's like, fuck this place. This We're, place is too sad. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of the time all my friends die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, more or less. So they're back there, and they're getting everything shut down. They're sending the blanks to their own place, someplace else, setting up shop in a different spot, you know, so they can keep it going. In, in Medina? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Old when, when got the, sent inquis- to the, barn. The, the interrogator show, from the Dead Inquisitor shows up. Right. And says, hey, so listen, I was going through his stuff. And uh, and he's still crying, by the way. Right, he's like, he's like, dude, amazing. I was gonna beg you to like take me on, and he's like, dude, I choose my own staff, bitch. Yeah, yeah. like super hard. I was like, he's, whoa, well, man. He, goes, he says, I was gonna beg you to take me on until I found this information. So, and he's like, you're not doing the autopsy that was left over after <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, of, of, of the feet. Because uh, 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 all the what was left was a foot. Have, what was left were these. They all had tats, should have had tattoos, and what was left was were like two. His two feet were all that were left, 
and they, there was no tattoos. There was no Malice tats brand. Yeah, there was no Malice brand. So he was like, "That's, I'm 100% certain that Lycos did not kill That was a patsy. Guy. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. And then he says, so. Should have had a soundboard for that. Can, can I come with you? And then he was like, no. <laughs> No, yeah, he was. Just yeah, he was like, he's like, yeah, he's like, lol, JK, let's go. All right, dude, let's go. He, he cool. didn't want to, and he's like, I usually choose my own people, but he felt uh, for this, this that caper. He, he had to. Yeah. And he ends up being like a good addition to the team. Yeah. I like him. He's actually, I actually liked him better than Ravener as an, as an interrogator. Well, considering that my first introduction to Ravener was the, he's a, he's got a, he was the predator who's also having sex with a sword woman and then dead. <sighs> Man, what so, a. Okay, so Ravener. Nope, nope. That's no, the same no, no, for but, book. no, no, but oh. yeah, Ravener. Uh, at this point, we find is has burns over ninety percent of his body. It's totally like amputated a bunch of his limbs, like have all been burned up. So he's like basically a burned up little cripple. He's like Darth Vader without the suit yeah. right now. No, for real. Yeah, and he has like a fused mouth, and like his eyes are burned out. I love like, Abnett's writing on things, but there's some things where he's just like Star Wars. Yep going with star wars on this one like he has a dartboard with different movie tropes on it <laughs> his characters and he just throws predator it star wars <laughs> vader Ooh, yeah. ravener became vader he keep, keeps on aiming for the alien no one. he's the chick from the what is that space odyssey or whatever oh 2001 space of the beep with, yeah yeah right yeah. yeah that's what i was seeing with that either yeah. that or um davos i'm afraid from i can't Doctor do that Who. okay yeah but yeah, so Ravener is at this point, like, if he lives, it'll be an eternity of pain, which is very 40k. So he's, sure. a, so he's going to... So he's going to... Dreadnought? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Kind of just, well, in a... Without the weapons, armor, size, or... Well... Mobility. Okay. Of a Redemptor Dreadnought. Got but it. But way more durable. Oh, yeah. It's, because it's a character with less than 10 wounds. And an, <laughs> and an invulnerable <laughs> save. <laughs> oh... Boy, so uh, our merry team at this point, I think they split up, right? No. No, no, no. no everybody goes to... Uh, Kadia? No, no, I don't think no. so. They get, they don't go, they go to the... They the, go to the... Um, the, the farm planet? The planet first. The what? The, the muty twist. Yeah, the twist. The twist. Oh, oh, man. We call them twists. Oh, was man, that, that not... Was so that good. was like the, the, yeah. the dialogue was good and like the... They go undercover the as mutants. Yeah. Yeah. So who was... it? Who uh, at this point I'd forgotten that it wasn't Ravener and I was only kind of half listening because I was struggling with jet bikes. I'm building it, but I love that. I love the scene. I can't remember the name of the person that played the bad guy with him. The uh, oh Harlan Nail. Harlan Nail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Harlan Nail is like amazing. In, oh man, in this so whole good. thing. Yeah. Like, like he's pretending to be a mutant. He knows like he knows like what the music is called and like you don't you don't like this demon funk or whatever. And yeah. Just, like, don't put something. It's like dubstep. They call it pound. Pound, yeah. Pound. yeah. Also known as K-pop. I I figured it was like uh, I see in my head it was more techno. dubstep. Yeah, dubstep. Yeah. Mm, gross. Dubstep. <laughs> uh, so so they get there and they they they're dressed up. They've got these costumes on that are actually functioning, so that it looks like they really are. Yeah, like um, he's got a bunch of extra eyes, you, you know, and uh, and Eisenhorn has like tentacles under his armpit. That, yeah, that sneaks out as I, I feel like shape. Eisenhorn asks for like the least possible mutations to look convincing. Right. Sure, like well, fuck, we're not just gonna stick some tentacles on your arm. He's like, yeah, do that. Well, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Sounds I'll, good. It's like a. I, I think his uh, his tentacles were kind of like bagpipes. Like he just had a big old thing of air underneath his arm and his armpit, and he squeezed it, and the tentacles were like. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you're a mutant. It's cool. You're a mutant now, son. Uh, so they go and they they. It was very Guy Ritchie. Yeah. So basically, they found out they found a way based on some leads to buy uh, the psyker that was stolen. There was an alpha level. Well, they, Al- they there, there, was, there was an alpha level psyker brain for sale. But they yeah, and they thought that it was this guy. Right. They figured it was that guy. So they get in this club, and they they make their way over to talk to the guy. Right. After paying for drinks, and of course, he's getting a hand job. Right. Oh yeah, he's yeah, getting totally. hand job the whole scene. Right. Yeah. By the quill girl. Right. No, by some other horse with some a other, bunch of yeah. arms. Yeah. Which, so she was, you know, she, she was like actually giving winks at Eisenhorn with an eye on her tongue. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, there was uh, there was also a, a dancing girl with a belly for her mouth. Or, right, uh, and uh, giant um, tits. Yeah. 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 Um, it was a good bar scene. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a great, great bar scene. Very Just like Star Wars. Total recall. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was it was like Total Recall. Yeah. It was Total Recall scene. Yeah. Oh, it it landed so in between good. them. Yeah. He was so like, he's like, all right, well, I could do both I think of these. We, we've had like uh, like a quarter of a book at this point of Eisenhorn being a badass. And then the first thing he does when he's undercover doing this like like wet work here is him fucking up and using Imperial credits to try and pay for Oh, yeah. oh right. It's like, <laughs> we, don't it's like we don't take that here. The yeah. fuck is that? We don't like, take that here. Oh, we mine we creds stole some else stuff. This. Yeah, oh, we stole this. And then he was oh, like, "Shit, I'll he, take it." And he points out, "I was like, damn it, that was stupid. I'm tired. I should not have done that." And they're like, "Oh, you're getting like old man Logan here." Yeah. So then um, Harlan is like, "Ah, well, we just did a we hit a big score and stole a credit train, and so we got money to spend." And the guy's like, "Well, in that case, yoink." Yeah. <laughs> so he, so they're like, so that makes him a big target later on. So they meet with the with the uh, with the fence to buy the psyker. Right. And uh, and then they they leave the bar after a while, after they get some drinks, and then they, they shoot themselves up with Narcan or whatever to make themselves uh, like yeah, immune to drunkenness. To clean their system, basically. It's like yeah. a banana bag so that they're sober suddenly. Sure. Or um, milk. A what? A, a banana bag? That's what it's called. What the fuck, what is, the a fuck is a banana bag? You, uh, in the military, you, get yourself, you go get yourself a banana bag, and I, it's an IV bag. That's all it is. Oh. So he leaves the bar <laughs> after brokering how, how a deal for the psycho. Never heard that before. No, you no. just you could just get a uh, look at Danny. Anyway. Look, at I me. wasn't in Are World War Two. I don't know what the slang was then. <laughs> <laughs> it's very mean. It's just very late past my bedtime. Bananas were my not nurse allowed. is gonna pick me up and try to tuck me in very shortly here. So let's wrap this up. You're too small um, to tuck. So but. they get they leave the bar. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they leave the bar. They leave the bar and they get. Uh, they get. They try to get mugged because they because they, they flash some cash, right. right? And they so they end up fighting all these mutants and they're trying not to use their good weapons. Right, they're trying to fight like crap, but still win. Right, like like Eisenhorn has a rapier instead of his. Whoa, whoa, whoa! He's an inquisitor, not a raper. I mean, you don't know. Okay, so they, he doesn't they write the... about the other stuff he does. He has a seal that lets him do anything. That's true. That's not rape. Nope, that's the nope. emperor's will. This is. I don't like this path. I don't like where we're headed with this conversation. I want to nip this one. I'm gonna. Anyway, this is my one veto of the podcast. So this okay, conversation fair, is fair, over. Fair, fair, fair. fair, fair. Yeah. All right, we're moving on. We're yeah. moving right. on. So, uh, uh, they, so they get in a fight. They kill a bunch of mutants. And the cops are right there. They're like... Yeah, the cops showed up really fast, oddly enough. Well, they were already there, remember? Because like, they were like, oh, shit, I hope we don't have to flash our, our Inquisitor co- like, oh, uh, right, certificates. Right, right. Yeah. They're like, then, we could do that and be super easy, but then we're boned. Yeah, then, we're, then we'll lose nobody, all of nobody our... Nobody will believe our street cred. Right, so. exactly. So they kill the guys. The cops are after them. They go to their hotel. Beekman pretends to be a prostitute having sex with Gregor, which um, is really was on, uncomfortable. She was on top of him, actually, underneath the sheets when the yeah. cops kicked the door down. Right. You know, which is had to have been really awkward for him uh you know due to his unrequenting love for her and and also and, and also repulsion yeah, yes innate repulsion um yeah so they and the, the cops are like what's up well i was up here having sex and the guy goes With sorry this. have a good day right. basically is how that pans out and i'm like well that's just was the beacon writing. was like hey can you like like don't fuck with me i'm trying to make a living here can a girl make a make a buck yeah yeah so and then smash cut too later um, in the night when everyone's sleeping. And then ha- the um, and the the hedgehog girl shows up and says, "Oh yeah, here's here's, me- meet up. here's your marker. Follow a tracker. Follow this tracker to the the buy site to to get the the psyker brain." Right. Um. And she says at the end after they tip her pretty well, she's like, "Don't trust them." Yep. Yeah. Which you know, always leave a good tip to your and server. And the next morning they bring home food pails and paper cups. They bring home food and paper cups. That's mm-hmm. what I kind of remember from that. It was weird. I thought it was weird that they had paper cups for food. I don't know. It was weird. Anyway. Wow. All right. So 41st millennium. Recycling is important. Well, they yeah. have a lot of plants there. Maybe they can make paper really easily. Mm-hmm. So uh, the next scene is them just kind of traversing the countryside to, to find this middle of this farmland thing. Yeah, that's just been like cut down. I assume these are like 20 foot plants and that kind yeah, of stuff, I'm like s- all this like agriculture. agriculture stuff. And like it's these big like tractors that go through there that are like city sized. I don't know. Anyway, I love so, the description of those. Yeah, uh, like unnecessarily large because it was essentially grain factories on wheels. Yeah. Right. And like by the time they come back, like they'll go all around the entire equi- like equator of the world, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. like by the time they get back around, the plants have already grown back up again. 
And so they're just able to like keep mowing continuously on these fields. So there were a couple things that I that were you know they're unconsequential to the story really um, that I liked. But number one is they noticed a bunch of the dead rodents Rats, yeah. um, killed whatever you know ex rodent or whatever it is, and they're like, oh, well, you'd think they'd learn to be better. And and Amos busts out like math on them, yeah, a statistic, a right? Sti- uh, he's like, so uh, there's this many rodents on the planet and i'm seeing this many dead right here which leads to believe that this percentage actually did get smart enough to get out like of the 98 of percent of yeah, them. I, was yeah. like, I was like haha and they're like this is why nobody likes you you know like, <laughs> <laughs> but the tracker the other thing is the tracker stops working um and eisenhorn's like hmm interesting broken tracker that's what i would have done if i was setting this up to sting somebody so it seemed legitimate instead of right. like a for real one to be like hey idiots come to this trap this so we fancy can inquisitor yeah. like come over here so that we can kill you mm-hmm. so he he bangs it on his hand like a couple of times and it works again and so then they like you do with moving. all good technology yeah so. right turn it off and on again yeah benediction of the omnicide so they get there and you meet this cast of characters of people that are basically wannabes oh man um there's the the wannabe death cult lady. oh i love that like, the chick who the wannabe death cult assassin <laughs> yeah, which she's the, like tweaking her nipples as she's talking and stuff does, and like, she really had the incel mall ninja feel about yeah. her yeah mm. And then the, uh, <laughs> uh, there was, didn't she have slaves with her too? Yeah. yeah no, they, they weren't slaves. They're so, just death cult members. Well, I they, no, but, well, the way I, I the way it, I pictured Sex it in slaves. my head was, uh, in, they're gimps. So in, yeah. in dodgeball, when they, they get the yeah. gimp suit outfits, that's what I pictured was that, yeah, totally. that, that squad, not the, not the dodgeball team, but like the guys leather that were daddy. supposed to, yeah. Gimp like, squad. Oh, are you leather daddy? It's like, that's what I pictured was them like that. <laughs> and they're all just standing around, but wearing, you know, just the weirdest Gross. shit. And they're like, we're yeah. death cult. In the middle of a cornfield. Yeah, but Gim Squad's there. Yep. They had a dude with like got... a air conditioner coat. Yeah. And then a super rich lady, right? And yeah. Well, that was, was the Death Cult Assassin was a super rich lady, wasn't it? I no, think there, there was, was another, another super there was rich another lady. another upper hiver yeah. described as. Huh, interesting. And then there was some off-worlder looking dude. Yeah. So then they start the auction. Yeah, I liked when the one guy goes, like they start bidding and the one guy goes... <laughs> Okay, I see. We found the common. Uh, we found the common denominator, or like the tone of this, and like I'm just gonna bid like 80, 80 times more than you guys have currently. Yeah. Bid. So, so tweaking nipples and offworlder are like one hundred creds, two hundred cred. creds, right? And he's two hundred one. Like, he's like, okay, two million, and they're like, oh, okay, we don't have that much money. No, they still bid anyway. They were, they were like, ah, oh, fine, two point five million or whatever, but. Well, yeah. like, as soon, but like quickly in the process, a couple of them get priced out. Yeah, and they're like, and they're already trying to leave. Yeah, yeah that was the that was the leather daddy. Oh yeah, the, for sure. Gib Squad, we're trying. Gib Squad was trying to leave. They got priced out super quick. Uh, someone else got priced out super quick, and then I enjoy that, um, like the Eisenhorn in his uh, like mute suit or his twist outfit was just like one gajillion dollars and like throws it down on the ground. It's all there. Like you boss. can count it. And, yeah, uh, that was fucking badass. It was also yeah. really stupid because, you know, where do you get that, that much money from? Well, from the score, they already set their story up. Yeah, they said that. So, and who cares if it's money? Yeah, that's fair. Um, And so, like, Wild Cherry Pepsi then appears, like, pulls off one his of, face. Yeah, one of the guys. One of the buyers, the guy, yeah, the guy pulls the off suit, his face. The guy in the uh, the air conditioning suit is just like, yeah. it was me the whole time, Eisenhorn. He's like, and quit, like, your stupid lisping, like, it's like oh, and slang. Thing. Yeah. You're such Pretending. a fucking bad actor. Stop it. <laughs> Nobody's buying that you're a twist. Like, Chirubiel, it's you. <laughs> and then Chirubiel goes on to murder everyone. Yeah, he kicks the shit out of people. They start shooting at him and trying to like hurt him. But it yeah, but all of Eisenhorn's anything. dudes live. So he's not trying to take out those for whatever reason. Yeah, at that time they do. And so they grab the, the Psyker in a cage and they jump in a, uh, a ship and they uh, like a it's not a real good ship, but like some sort of harvest transport ship or something like that. I think yeah. it's one of the around the world harvester machines, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no, they get on a land speeder oh, and yeah. go to one of the harvesting machines because uh, one of them like crashes or something. So they're on a they're on a land speeder, and he gets on like a land speeder bike. Yeah, he's chasing after him, trying right. to get. Right. He's that. like we, which is a scene. Didn't we see that in a different in the first book? Mm, was not that, that I remember. With no. the guardsmen There's getting a couple deployed of and stuff like scenes that in this book. But so he's chasing them, but he's not able to shoot back at them, and they're shooting at him because yeah, he has no gun. Well, I thought he had a gun. No, no. Oh, no, he's in a, yeah, he's got his gun. Yeah, he gets go- a little. He has his little gun, mm-hmm. right? Because he couldn't the bring that big piece. bolt pistol because that would be noticeable. Well, and then he loses the bolt pistol in the field. 
because because uh, Cherry Bale throws him. Oh right, right. So that so actually he loses the bolt pistol forever. Yeah, because he came field. geared up because he right. was expecting shits go down, and it did. But he wasn't expecting Cherry Pepsi to show up. No, Cherry Pepsi. Wild Cherry Bill up. messed him up, kind of, but made him live. So he gets on the speeder and he's chasing after the the brokers, uh, unable to shoot. He's he's basically he's Luke, uh, dodging in Endor, you know. Oh, uh, really badly. But not Titus Endor. Right. Yeah. No, not Titus Endor. So he's on Endor. He's I would say he's more scouters. like Anakin dodging in Episode One. Nobody's seen that. Oh my so god! Does anybody know? Stop. <laughs> Um, now this is pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is inquisiting. That, that was the noise. That was actually the sound that I, you know what I, I'll try heresy. That's a good trick. So I'm playing with my custode bikes, making the noise, you know, as I'm going and in my head, the only thing I said, please, you know, nobody knows what custode jet bikes actually sound like. Please don't let them sound like pods. Oh man. One. That's the best part about them. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So. Right, side, side tangent, really quick. Episode one has a lot wrong with it. Its sound design is immaculate. Oh, it's so good. Well, the, because the, for those, right? Yeah, like, and the and all the jets and other stuff that they have, like the big silver one. The well, sound design awesome. was very well done, except so when it's the in sound space. design in the audio book yeah. of this actually. Yeah, it was pretty good. So, so yeah, so we get to the giant harvesting, the combine harvester, the well, slash factory slash. So as they're traveling traveling along, he's chasing them, right, and. Uh, he all of a sudden, um, Betancourt shows up in the gun cover. Oh yeah! And she's like, I forgot about that part. She looks at him and she she sends him a message via Vox like, Hey, what's up? You want me to shoot them down? And he's not able to cue the Vox by his throat because he's holding on for dear life because he sucks at riding a, a pod racer, and so he just sends a mind bullet thought to her, which is, No, you know, we need them alive. Don't don't we, shoot him. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't get them down, but don't shoot them down and she just goes ow fuck don't do that or warn me if you're going to next time and then proceeds to try to shoot them down with fails well because one of them shoots her and she gets pissed and shoots them down yeah so they they which turns out luckily not to be the one with the psyker in it right so they give chase to the psyker one and they land with the grain harvester building um moving building and whatnot and because they don't want to get shot down more by Medea. that's why they land in there and so a firefight ensues in the middle of this like grain harvester. They're shooting at each other. Eisenhorn eventually gets the the psyker. Yep. Oh yeah. You know what I forgot? What's Lyco that? is there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Lyco. Yeah, Lyco is because yeah. yeah, well, it's at the meet. He comes out of the like out of hiding. Right. And he's he's like he grabs the Sheridan and they take off with him. Right. And and I think uh, Wild Cherry Pepsi Cherry Bale like poofs out of existence. Right after. Um, after they grab after, a striker. After he throws Eisenhorn. Yeah, throws everybody, right? Okay. He murders a bunch of people, pushes Eisenhorn, and then disappears. Yeah. So I like that he shoved, he filled Leather Daddy with the Gimp Squad, actually, I think is what. I'm sure know, just, he kills them, yeah. I yeah. want to. Yeah. Just right up the butt. Yeah, right up the butt. It's like a turducken of <laughs> death cult. <laughs> it's a turducken of Gimp Squad. It's a Gimp Duckin. So th- then, uh, you know, he realizes he doesn't have the bolt pistol because it fell out in the field and he's freaking out. But he's also got to fight Lycos and uh... Yes. His name should be Lycos from now on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, That's that great. Up. It's Lyco, but like it should be Lycos. That's way better. Yeah, names. Lycos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I too like so mid nineties internet how does that, stuff. That fight go down? Um, like him and Eisenhorn like have a little bit of a firefight and then Eisenhorn uh like gets the better of him. Um and then he's he's like Lyco tries to his like more powerful is more power or is not as powerful psychically as Eisenhorn and like goes into Eisenhorn's mind to like fuck with him. And Eisenhorn like goes, nah, fuck this shit goes back into his mind and is pulling out all the information about like, what made you do this? Why are you like trying to go against the Imperium? Who's your master? And Cherry Bale shows up and goes, no, no, you need to stop that right now. No. Yeah. Takes Lyco away from Eisenhorn and throws him into like some kind of like grinder. Yeah. Like he's plant he's grinder. like, you served your usefulness by, yep. and then takes the psyker and puffs out of existence. So then we're uh, left with, uh, that's the end of the book, right? No, no, no. We're maybe halfway through. That was literally the point where I went, Oh, I can listen to this on one and a half times speed. So it's better. I sped it up and it was a hell of, you know, 
cruise through stuff faster. So now we go to Cadia, which uh, which was a great little experience. It was awesome, actually. It was yeah. it, it, it was, was a very good well written. Yeah, um, I enjoy the rank of Inquisitor General. Yeah, instead of a normal Inquisitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shows the military mindset there, right? Yeah, yeah. So they go there. Uh, Fishig is there. It's the animal yeah. farm. That's when we figure out the contact is Fishig, who from the first book was the guy that was sent to travel with them for because to keep he, an eye to keep on an them. eye on him because he killed him because Eisenhorn the basically mur- yeah basically yeah. murderized a bunch of people and then became part of his squad instead. So, um. So he's there and he says, hey, look, check it out. I've got this news. Here's the deal. There's this cult that was measuring the obelisks. Yeah. Every once, they keep yeah. popping up every once in a while. But the right. last real time was, Which I just have an image. they all got burned at the stake the last time. Like, was like 25 years ago. I just have an image of a bunch of like really skinny nerds in lab coats and protractors. Like just measuring stones. <laughs> like not even worshiping. And be like, whoa. And they say as much, right? Like 42 they, centimeters. Yeah, they have they British have book. OSPEC scanners and they're just taking measurements of it. Right, and they're, they're like they're like, why do you care about these guys? These guys aren't important. And so it takes so they go over all the because they assume that whoever the master is, like the the chief architect of this, is is got to be somebody who has been coming onto the planet. Yeah, nice work there. Yeah. Um, well, they, he thinks it's terrible at first because they they refer to themselves as son of Bale. Yeah, they're like the sons of Bale or the, something. The sons of Pepsi, and they worship the cherub of Bale. Right. So they they do this research. The guy that was the Inquisitor General at the time is long dead. Yep. Um, and the new Inquisitor. Uh, she reminded me of Edna from the Incredibles movies. Oh, yeah. The, the, I could uh, see that. I, I, the she, chick who made the outfits. I, I think she, she actually reminded me more of the... Uh, the slug lady who from uh, Monsters Inc. was like Mike Wazowski. You need to file your paperwork. So that's that's who actually I pictured her as, to be honest. Okay, I, I mean, can see either one yeah. of those. That's fine. Yeah. The stern older lady who no is n- super knowledgeable. Um, but th- basically, he gets permission from her. Uh, he goes down to meet her in the archives, and she's like, "What do you care about this?" You know. Well, and right. he has a name for himself. Like she knows who he is. Yeah, she's yeah, like, he's using a fake identity your... at this point, right? No, no, no she knew exactly who he was. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. now I'm having two books blend together. That's my bad. I'm going to step back. Not really. That happens later. Um, so, so, spoiler. The, yeah. So she, he gets information, and she says, he says to her, "Why didn't you revolve and you know review the hit this guy's cases after he was dead?" And she's like, "Dude, I deal with like dude, I don't have fucking time for that 30, shit. 30 chaos like, cults a day. I'm okay. literally like three minutes from the Eye of Terror. I get daily invasions from chaos and cults popping up every three seconds. A bunch of dudes with Auspex scanners sneaking around at midnight, are measuring like not, rocks. Yeah, yeah, are not the highest level of my priority. So, so but he convinces her that it's like worthwhile." And then they try and figure out how this person has been getting on the planet or like uh, people have been getting off planet. to Because they said cult. that Kadia, it's impossible to get on Kadia without right, being Right, right. So they're checking with the military and the Kadian government is, or the Kadian like, military is like, it's not possible. It's not possible. Every flight is authorized. Everything comes down is to this amazingly planet. scanned. So, and we also discovered this time that the uh, the rogue trader captain that Eisenhorn had dealt with is is back. He's He's been sitting there for... Um, uh, Fezig, it's not Fezig. Fishig, Fishig, Max, Maximilia. Maxim- um, well, he's been he's been basically uh, Fishig's name? home. Right. Max- Maximilia is the person. So they go up and have this fancy deal uh, dinner, and they talk. And Eisenhorn's going through the cases, and he finally realizes that you know he's obviously getting on board on the planet. How does he do that? And he mentions it to people, and then he gets a message to go meet somebody. So first of all, he spends a year. Right. A literal year going through documents trying to figure out like how these people are getting on this I planet. I sped the book up to eight times at that point, actually. Okay. Because I, I was going like, to get through like a year. Like seasons pass. Yeah. O- almost an entire year, right? Well, and, and a year is relative to what they say it is because, you know, the Cadian spin and everything else could affect whatever. No, like it's a literal Earth year, He's, Terran year. Yeah. It's like an entire, it's a long ass time he researches these people with protractors. Right. And then finally... Maximilia breaks the case wide open because he manages like the person summons Eisenhorn right to yeah. to a small town a mysterious person says, yeah, I've got information for like, you yeah he's like all right so he goes to the town the innkeeper says oh yeah the guy who wanted you was is in the back he goes back there it's the fucking rogue trader he's like how did you, how did you get down here he's like oh easy you know you'd be surprised how much a bag of coins goes to like uh shut people up around here around here well then how do you how did you actually get on the planet and he said I, I just borrowed I, your identity. I told him I was you. Yeah. And like, then it's like, head explosion, like, you know, 
uh, connected light bulb goes so off. many thoughts together in his brain. So they go back to he goes back to the Inquisitor General and says, "Listen, somebody has been using your you know like figuring out." Well, he out goes through. He said, "Did you authorize checking. this flight? This yep. flight? This flight?" He goes, "These two, yes, but these two, no." Yeah, she's like, "I've not left the planet that time there." And then yeah, right. so they start figuring out. Well, who could use your you know your identity? There's only you know it would have to be somebody much higher up than in the chain of command to be able to use my identity and they determine it to be Jedi a, Master Sypha Diaz. Uh, <laughs> they decide they discover it to be Quixus. Yeah, Inquisitor Quixos, who, who is, is long, long gone to dead. be dead. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but body, never officially body was never dead. found. Right. Assumed, assumed dead. dead. Just right. like we assumed Ravener was dead. Uh no, we assumed he was handsome and skilled and the best interrogator he'd ever seen. Really good at sucking dick. Yeah. So we continue on. Uh they go really good. It was it was shortly after this that after this after this discovery the little psychic that, thumb up the ass that does it. Uh, <laughs> Inquisitors show up to arrest uh Eisenhorn. Yes. Yep. For, well no no. First they fight the demon host because they realize that someone oh, just right, right, authorized right. her thing. Yeah, they, yeah. they track it. And they so go. the cult resurfaces. They go to one of these these obelisks. Like there's these Kazarkin that are with the Inquisitor General, and they have this big old oh, battle. Man. Hold on. So you're talking about audio? You're talking about books from uh, that make you want to start a new army? The 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 Kazarkin, the way they're described, oh, and the man. badass so level good. that they were in this. I was like, well. I'm <laughs> Yeah, they were super cool. How do I how do I get these models? Yeah, Nail, who's a real bad is like a total badass, is like, no, dude, I don't want to fuck with these guys. Yeah, these <laughs> guys are badasses. Yeah. I like that. There's this a scene where he's like, so how do I know that they're not going to try to take us, me and my party, out here, uh, high Inquisitor General? And she goes, Sergeant So and So, he would like assurances that nothing will happen. And so they all turn, look at him, and go, and then turn away and go, your scans are registered in our systems. You will not get shot. Like, I literally can't shoot you. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't shoot you if I wanted to now. And I was like, execute order 66. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So they land. They catch the cult with the protractors out. Yep. And, and also a demon host. And they're expecting to see Cherry though. But it's not Cherry It's not no. Wild Cherry Bill. It's, so, it's vanilla Pepsi. It's uh, <laughs> profanity. It's, uh, profanity, wasn't it? Oh, was it profanity? I thought it was profanity was what he was But I think himself. it was spelt like really weird and uniquely. Oh. But I was only hearing it, so. Okay. I was still yeah. reading it. But so still the, a powerful demon host. Very yeah. powerful. And, you know, the 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 Karskins do all sorts of badass shit. Oh, man, they kill the, all the cultists like, the cultists like, are, no, like, like nobody's like, business. But there's a couple times where they're trying to shoot the demon host. And because Eisenhorn or Beckwin, who is with them on this time, is standing on the other side of the demon host, their weapons were like, click, 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 nah. Right, right. So instead, the sergeant tackles the demon host, dude. Like a <laughs> what a badass! He's just like yeah, I was like, oh, it's the sergeant of the Carskins off the top rope with a chair, and the demon <laughs> host was like, dude, I'm Andre the Giant, man. What are you doing to me? Smash. Just yeah, just like disintegrates. Just, just like yeah. He doctor Manhattan's him. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, that's a good description of a demon yeah. host. Yeah, yeah. doctor Manhattan. Uh, in the well, in the in this scenario, yeah. in, in the books on the tabletop, right. it's Rorschach. But yeah, you know. <laughs> so they're, they 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 man, I'm just happens, filling the pop culture. And they, yeah, nice. The day, yeah. Uh, profanity tells him, listen, uh, <laughs> um, you know what? You should bring better weapons next time. Yeah. Oh, You're, there's not going to be a next time, and because you did, because I'm going to kill y'all, and they you know they're basically running from him for a little bit and then that's when the inquisition guys show up and he's like whoop i guess i'm out of here then and takes off so profanity leaves and they get arrested well okay so profanity takes over the body of eisenhorn's dude because they kill him uh over nail no no the really annoying interrogator guy right was it? I thought he grabbed one go. of the sergeants. Or I thought he grabbed one of the carskins. No, no, he grabbed he grabbed uh, Hoosman, the the sniper guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we haven't talked about it all, but it's okay. Yeah, he's, he's dead. He's at not this really point. very yeah, now important. He's dead. Um, but alert, I think they I think they destroyed his corporeal body, right? Like, either with a yeah. gun cutter or I forgot exactly what they did to destroy him, but they destroyed him yeah, it eventually. Was, it wasn't, you know, effective. It obviously didn't hold. You know, didn't, sure, it didn't take. Well, it didn't it didn't get rid of his spirit, right? They should have. They should have made a bunch of mom jokes about him and called him old. Sure. <laughs> Would that break his spirit, Dave? I wouldn't know. 
Oh, man, so, that so was super the rights of, aggressive. Thank you. <laughs> the welcome. rights of binding for Dave are making references to the 40s and 50s. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he takes the body and he kind of just goes and, disip- and get, gets gone, right? He just vanishes over the moors. Yeah. So that was when the Inquisition hunting party shows up, led by uh, Inquisitor, somebody that Is we it don't Osma? Like. I, I want or Orsini. I think it's, it's Ozma. Yeah. It's somebody that we I don't. It's, Ozma. it's somebody that we don't like at this no. point. Oh yeah, he's bad dude. But yeah. and he also brought along two people that um, I think they actually are known as uh, Inquisitor Soon to Die and Inquisitor General Gonna Bite It or something like that. Uh, okay. So they and you know they, they weren't consequential names to me. So he had a bunch of interrogators yeah. with him that were like writing down. There was and, like, an arresting party. Him yeah. yeah. And like he had to go through this ritual of like yeah it's total. Just absolutely like, hey, high gothic stuff. Yeah. I have this right, and like it's this whole big sequence where he's like, "Yep, I, you know, I'm submitting to you. I'm doing this. I'm not guilty. I'm not admitting like, to guilt. I'm taking seal. away your rosette." And he's like, "No, you can't. I get to hold on to that until I choose yeah. not to." As I, I would like you to man, surrender it was your like, rosette. <laughs> Whoa, whoa! It was like kind of a, a like, fuck. Who knows the rules better? Yeah, They're like ah, I will do this. No, you can't do this. But then I will do this. Ah, but you can't do that. I'm like, like oh, but I will do it was this. Like lawyers. Yeah. yeah. And so he, you know, he says, "Oh, and uh, and Fezig's my um my second, right?" Which basically protects him from being interrogated at the same time. Um, exactly, which was smart. Second, which was what he set it up. So and they, so all of his dudes go and hang out with uh, Neve or whatever the Inquisitor General, right? Because um, she actually likes him at this point. They're playing Jinrami and hanging out and stuff, right? And in, and Eisenhorn gets incarcerated. Right. Yes. So For a long time. Yeah. They they're was out. So time passes when you're listening to it for me and, and working on other stuff. And you listen I, I miss to the like passage 16 of time. Speed. Like I, Yeah, I miss <laughs> the passage of time where the, it says yeah, stuff like I mean he grew up he grew a nasty beard and like Well he couldn't have grown anything better. I mean <laughs> He was like Tom Cruise and cast away. Right. By well, by then. Tom Cruise? Season. Yeah, you didn't watch that version. No, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> it, it, it was, all it was almost as good as Tom Hanks and Ronan. Oh. So, <laughs> the best Tom Cruise movie. Um, so yeah, so uh, but meanwhile, um, Fez like standing around, right? Oh, I think no. The the best part about like the interrogation. Okay, the interrogation tactic parts. one. They're like, we're gonna, and Eisenhorn's like. <sighs> I've been an inquisitor for 200 years. I know what you're doing. I know what Levels you're going to do. One through three will not work on me. One, so yeah, just go straight just to just four. Go yeah. <laughs> We've been authorized to go as high as nine. You're going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> and just, just Eisenhorn's pissed offness at the fact that he knows what they're doing. He knows right. what they're trying to do. And he's like, and they're yeah. doing it badly. And they're in doing his, it really badly. I think, he's, I think he's more irritated that they sent bad interrogators to him. Right. Right. And he's just like, oh. So, uh, Fezzik comes in and asks a direct question. Says, "Look, I need to know what's going on. Is this something? Are you legitimately are, a heretic? Yeah, are you legitimately uh, Malleus? Sure." Uh, and he says, "And he's no, and no. He goes, okay, right. which is true. So listen, just I, whatever yeah. you do, eat your food." <laughs> and Eisenhorn's like, "Oh, I'm, good, because I've been starving. You know." He's like, "No, I don't want to." And it's eat I, your fucking dinner. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then, like his is his, another inquisitor comes in and is like, "Okay, we've been authorized to use level nine uh, interrogation on you. Uh, we're gonna do that tomorrow." And he's yep. like, "You know, I'm gonna die if you do that." Which right? is which is one week before he's set to be extradited back to Thracian Primus to like actually stand real trial, right? So, um, so he, he Fensig and Vassini poison him. Yep, he gets with the <laughs> same poison that they took from the the Dark Eldar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they. He, he's yelling at a doctor. The doctor comes in and, and with with the one of the lower guys that we don't know uh, comes and, in and he's like, "Well, obviously he's he's like, dude, he's look at him. He's di- he, he's, he's faking it. Blood like, is <laughs> shooting out of oh, his nose. Yeah, look now his <laughs> eyes are bleeding. That's stage two. He will die in fifteen minutes if we don't get him. Somewhere. I like that the inquisit the Fisher at this point is like, well, I mean, you could let him die, but I'll let you explain to your boss why you let the biggest case he's ever had just <laughs> die." So they get him on this. They get him on a gun cutter. Uh, they get him on a medical ship. A medical ship. A Valkyrie. A Valkyrie. Yeah, yeah. Like like on her tail. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And they're cruising across, and and Eisenhorn's in absolute worthless agony. Oh yeah, he's dying. He's yeah. right. No, he's literally dying. Yeah, he's. So they, they sold the ruse really well by actually trying to kill him. <laughs> uh, that was clever. 
that's when they pull the gun out and um, shoot like three people on the ship. And the and he's like, "Sorry, pilot, you know, just land." Yeah, um, yeah. And th- like, because the gun cutter comes down and like is like, "Hey, land!" And then they 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 land it, and then they shoot up the. They the, they the leave Valkyrie. the inquisitor. Uh, the inquisitor. Um, no, it's the doctor because the doctor's there. The inquisitor was killed. The doctor and and the pilot are still there on this medical transport, and they take off. And it's basically like, "Really sorry, dude. I bet they had families, but no witnesses." You know? Right. And, and they they blow it up. They're like, "So it crashed," and Eisenhorn died in the crash blah 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 right um they later find out that it worked for a little bit right it not not very long apparently no but, so they they bolt up to their ship uh to the the rogue trader ship and they get the fuck out of there yep and they head for um so i oh, what's the name of the I got rock confused. the asteroid i got confused at this point because he does um there's like some weird thing with a crone and predicting her death and i like it just skipped over skipped to that and i went What's happening with this person that just refers to him as heretic all the time? Oh, okay. So, anyway, so they so they, so they figure out the ruse, right? And they're going to this planet. Uh, this like it's not it's not it's a rogue planet. So like it's roving through another solar system, like following a rogue star. Okay. Um, but they have to make and stop and get supplies, and they need an astropath. So they get this as this like cheap astropath. This like I would assume like I imagined her as like a sixty year old woman, chain smoker, like super bad health, like, like going for a hooker and leaving with some math addict in their fifties. Right, and she didn't. She thought that they were a real inquisitor, but they weren't. And he has well, to like kill people. Like they have to kill a whole. Oh yeah, they kill like whole guard platoons and stuff. And, of, and then also another inquisitor who like he wants to make a name close. for himself. Right. Um, yeah. So. But I just like that she's like, "Ugh, you're gonna! I've seen the visions. You're gonna get me killed, heretic!" And she just just refers to him as heretic the whole way because he's at this point he's been declared, um, you know, very seriously Her- hereticus, hereticus. diabolus. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, escaping from prison, killing an inquisitor or two, and massacring imperial troops will generally get you called a heretic. Mm. He he tried to kill as little as possible, but he, they left him no choice. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. He's innocent. But the things he did to keep ran. his innocence. So no, no, he's a, he isn't fully entitled to do those things. He's an inquisitor. He is above no one's reproach. Fair, fair. I didn't think of it from that angle. But yeah, we fly off, uh, and then we get to a giant asteroid, right? Yeah, this rogue yep. planet that's like a mining colony kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, so they make this elaborate backstory about how they're like geological surveyors from a university. Seems a bit. I mean, pointless because at this point they're just descending down to Cloud City and not not getting any responses to their hailing codes. And well, they but they do make, make up sure. this rad story because there's meant to be thousands of people down here, right. so they're going right. to need good cover. And they get there and it's empty. They're like searching around with flashlights. Eisenhorn's wearing like a full gas mask and is pretending to be muscle, and Amos is pretending to be like a geologist, and uh, Medea is like their pilot. Hey, sexy pilot. Yeah. They're sexy, she's not sexy very good pilot. At, she's not very good at acting. So they were just like, you're a pilot. <laughs> you're a sexy pilot. And she's like, I got this. And so they meet up with two people. Yeah, the chief uh, of security and some random dude. Yeah. And they ask him what's going on, and they explain that it's it's moving into a different gravity well, which means it's going to be unminable. So they cleared everybody out. All the mining corporations moved out. Everything moved out. Because because the gravity is, is fluctuating, which can cause gravitation sickness, which is really, really bad. Which d- has caused tons of gravitation sickness. So everybody bounced except right. for him and like 20 other people. And they ask why. There's, they said they're looking for an Archmagos um, ball, bale. Uh, oh, my God. I just – beer. Beer, right. So be- they're looking beer. for, they're looking for beer, because um, he's gonna help <laughs> and deal that's with so the much wild better story. <laughs> Jerry Pepsi. Um, they're looking for this Magos, and he, you know, like his last known location was his planet. So they say, "Oh, the Magos? Yeah, no, he's he's still here. The whole reason we're here is because uh, we're supposed to stay here until he leaves. Right. Per we're being paid hazard pay. Um, but they can't find him, so they go to the. Uh, Adeptus Mechanicus Hall, uh, Eisenhorn does. Yeah, so they take him to like a storeroom to sleep, like for a room. Right. And then uh, Medea, Amos, and Eisenhorn all split up and go to different places. Right. Like to explore. So Eisenhorn goes to the Adeptus Mechanicus Hall, which also has a Warlord Titan head just suspended floating in the ceiling, towards the ceiling. Just like that, actually. Great Um, radio, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Danny is now floating a gorgeously painted warlord head. Smashed. Smashed. Smashed warlord smashed head. Warlord head. We um, made sound effects earlier. We know it's smashed. It is smashed. I watched it get smashed. Uh, so and and then all of a sudden everything fires up like it was dead, just absolutely dead. And it was like somebody has flipped a breaker and everything just goes ding and turns on and and something starts and, printing. And and he hears a fifty six k modem sound and then the the dot matrix printer noise. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and so he goes and finds the printer and gets the paperwork. Yeah, he gets the paper that printed out. And then, uh, like, as quickly as it comes on, it turns back off again. Yep. And then he gets a uh, Voxcom from Medea, Rose Saying Thorn, that she's in trouble Aegis, or whatever. Uh, peanut butter, maniple, sexy Nipple. penis. I like how they, um, <laughs> this book and the next book, they try to explain Glossier. He actually did it explain has, it in this. But I'm still like, I don't fucking get it. How are you getting that information from this? Uh, you just have to be used to it, I guess. Yeah. Let's take a little bit of license there, I guess. Maybe we'll do an episode on... We'll just do an entire episode in, in Glossier. Glossier. Yeah. That would be great. Is he pronouncing it Glossier? Yeah, I think yes. so. Oh, God. That's not how it's spelled. Um, so, in Britain, it is. So he finds them, and they figure out that uh, they're, in fact, you know, there's there's something wrong with everything they're saying. It's not 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 as right. And the, so they, they give Amos the printout, and he looks at it, and he says... Well, this is from this is from Beer down. He's down in the planet's core or whatever, doing stuff, sending reports, sending reports back. I like that checking it's just it, like checking this, in. Yeah, the standard mechanicus thing just to keep going and still like can, well, uh, completing his tasks. So there's it, he was well, he was completing uh, yeah. he was completing his task, but he was also hiding and sending these messages, hoping that people would get it, leaving an imprint of where he had been in the color coding on the system. Right. That, um, Albus, Amos inf- Albus instantly Dumbledore was out. able to read. <laughs> he instantly figures out. <laughs> um, and so they get they get themselves up uh, in the middle of the night to get attacked because it turns out you know the thirty people that were left there are all oh yeah and there's cultists. like way more people than they're at, than they actually right. yeah. were there thousands of cultists or hundreds of well, cultists I would that say that attacked them that were like they said there was thirty but there was know. like at least fifty that they saw yeah, yeah. so they you know like oh there's like twenty of us and then. So they get uh, they get ambushed in the coat closet where they're sleeping, which I don't know if you tried to ambush anybody in a coat closet, but um, they just murdered the shit out of the cultists that came at them. Right. Well, the inquisitor and right. jump into some sort of uh, mining pod. He thing. almost punches a dude's head off. Well, yeah. I mean, he's basically a magos. So kind of. Yeah. He's uh, he's yeah. augmented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's he's pretty hard. Um. So they they jump in a mining pod and they descend down. In the crust, on, in the lava, or whatever it is. And they have to like have do a bunch of evasion and stuff like that to get rid of the people who are chasing them, which they managed to succeed. So they jump in a mining cart, and they take this track down to find uh, beer down below. They're still in the pod. They're still in the pod. It's the mining track. No, the, well, they go in the pod. Down. To We're not at doing this that. Point. No, no, no. No, it's all got, Star Wars references you got at this Indy. point. They, that's, they, that's they, still a Lucas funk. They, they, they tried spinning. It was a good trick. And then they saw like a perfectly carved circle in the ground. Right. So they follow that down and come across this like massive, massive drill. Like, well, I pictured it like a robotic centipede. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. Because he calls it the was it does it the lithopede? Yeah, really? Yeah. Because I in my head I picture it like the uh, in labyrinth when the when the girl is uh, running and the, the big drill bit thing is coming at him. And then it goes I've never past. seen Labyrinth before. Well, it's I an think older movie. I, I kind of agree with Danny, um, where it. But don't worry, it's in color and it has sound. Oh, um, are also, there puppets? Yeah, like the like the centipede and the fact that the 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 tunnel isn't just kind of a straight line and it curves. Yeah, and kind it, of moves, moves it moves around, around. And things like that. Um, but like they 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 approach this this millipede style ship in their little like mining pod. And I think instantly all of its guns turn on it. <laughs> right. And he's like, he starts yelling into it like a code sign. Um, and so so Beer lets him on board. It exposes its anus, opens up, and lets them fly into it. And he enters the ship. <laughs> it's really, yeah. <laughs> so was the code like, oh, excuse me, I, I dropped my magnum condom from my magnum <laughs> mining pod. For my monster <laughs> pod. <laughs> And then the ship opened up, receptive. Uh, so they they play it, it in presents it. Yeah. He, he meets he meets uh, he meets Beer, uh, and they, they yeah Beer they and his master were boys, right? So he was kind of friends with us. Yeah, yeah. They, they so know they, each other. They kind of know each other. Um, and so they were talking, and he's like, "Oh, now I understand why you know you so and so liked you, as as wanted you thought you'd make it a good inquisitor. You found me after all." 
and sure. they're going over that and he explains yep the cultists i've been kind of trying to, to send out word i have to kill this chaos rock but it's a yeah yeah literally, literally that's it he's like there's the rock is is chaos the there's, whole thing we have to yeah. we have to kill it there, there's a giant stone yeah so it's a perfect dodecahedron yeah they get I, go, a, I imagine it being which, like the you know, heart of a the 12 planet. sided dice they hate it's a well known fact that Edmac hate perfect sides of anything games so. workshop hates more things with more than six sides so <laughs> It's too many. too many. Destroy it. It's heresy. So uh, I, what I like is so they go in and they kind of keep going and then they find this like this perfect de- decahedron kind of evil rock and like, oh, we know it's evil because we can sense it and feel it. But they learn that what they've been doing is like shaving pieces of the rock off of it and then injecting it into people to, to kind to of turn spru- them into the cult. To turn them right. into cultists. And I'm like, that's so fucking rad. And like the well, cultists down and- there. Isn't this evil rock? Wasn't it determined that it is the same mineral as the pylons on Cadia? That's why it was being mined. No, no, no. Okay. It was unrelated. I'm that's, way off. that's later. Okay, sorry. Okay, so so Medea and Beer hit it off really well because she's like, I also have an augmented hand. And yeah, and he thinks that's sexy. He yeah, gives he them was... nutrient gruel and flavorless broth mm, because of the robo boner he Delicious. got from Medea's robot hand. Uh, so they fight off the, the cultists and they head towards this rock to destroy it. Meanwhile, the cultists have like agglomated their dead and like dead people into like this giant, I don't know, flesh monster. Oh yeah. Which yeah. fights the lithopede. Like, so they're fighting against each other. Yeah. But it's ma- the, the monster is made up of dead bodies. Right. And like the, the, the lithopede shoots out combat servitors out of the side, like opens up and lets them out. So they're shooting guys and kind of, oh, dude, battle. you know what it's like? It's like the uh, flying worm thing from Avengers One. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Because the the yeah, and, and then you've got uh, when the mining pods are chasing Eisenhorn and, and Betancourt as they as just they bounce suiciding out, into right, them. Right, it's like uh, it's just like the scene when they're trying to take uh, Gamora in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. No, yeah, no. Yeah, for it's sure. That's, just liter- like that. that's literally what I pictured. I was like, well, hey, funny story. Dan Abnett and Guardians of the Galaxy. Dan Abnett <laughs> popularized Guardians of the Galaxy again in the early 2000s. Good job, Dan. Yeah. Um. So Eisenhorn gets to the, the, the rock. He kills a bunch of cultists on the way. They knock a couple pods into the lava. He puts Medea to sleep because right, otherwise she's going to go insane. Yeah. Um. How did he shut down the rock again? He starts blasting... Uh, Tech, he, no. He, no, oh, no, no, no. He, he blasts puts the, the imperial, prayer on the imperial repeat. primer pr- uh, prayer. Yeah, yeah. On repeat, and the abjuration of demons or something. Yeah, like that. something like that. Emperor Out the loudspeaker. He, he basically he basically treated you know the rock like it was Noriega in Panama, and and the Americans stood out. He stood outside with a, a <laughs> really. You really? <laughs> I don't understand the <laughs> reference. We're too young. <laughs> You understand the reference. You're not that young. <laughs> I mean, I, I do understand the reference. I'm just giving you a shit, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah really? They, they defeat the rock. Okay. So, so th- that's just, it. He, it so ends they with mine the playing. chaos rock. <laughs> Wait. Do they mine the chaos rock? Eventually. Because, so. <laughs> not initially. Listening to the story, it stops. Uh, uh, the Toby Longworth thing that I was listening to stopped right as he was blasting it with music and it was getting subdued that was it and then it cuts to a whole different scene with uh Pontius Claw. yeah so so it's at this point this is I think why they came back to find that Magos on that specific like, to help him make weapons right I to, to make weapons and talk to Glaw I went back like five or six times to try to figure out why it was suddenly a whole different scene which seemed to be a billion years earlier so as we remember from the it, first book Glaw is in the, a a tick in a box. Yeah, he's the essence <laughs> of a. It's kind a brain of, in a jar. He's the essence of a chaos uh, cultist, like a lead chaos cultist inside of a box. That it's Eisenhorn, really, uh, like a triple alpha level psyker. Yeah, no, which, he's, not, he's not a psyker. He's just a heretic. He's just a heretic. He was a psyker. I no, thought when no. he got in the box. Yeah, but like Eisenhorn taunts him, and the important thing we learn here is Eisenhorn told his superiors nothing about this guy. Yeah. No. Yeah. They don't, or they think he's destroyed. Or they or, think he's destroyed. Yeah. He's, he's yeah, not after destroyed the, anymore. After the uh, the Necrotuk affair, <clears> he he said, "Yep, Glaw's dead. Destroyed him. Yep." Don't and worry so about he it. talks to Glaw, and he strikes a deal with Glaw uh, to find this rogue Inquisitor Quixos and kind of things that are going on and like get information on how to defeat the demon host and all this other stuff here. In in exchange for 
Eisenhorn promising to make him a body. Yes. Right. So he could, so he could move around. Move around and not be a dick in a box anymore. Be a dick in a robot. Be <laughs> a dick in a robot instead. <laughs> He's a dick in a bot. Which, like, I read this part and I'm like, ooh. That's a bad deal. So <laughs> you're what? being accused of being a heretic and then you just made a deal with a literal chaos heretic. So Glaw explains to him when he turned, basically. He's, he starts talking to him about it and saying, you know. Well, like, he's, and I like that he was kind step. of an asshole before. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. You know, but it, it talks of like it just takes one little step on the path to turn you to damnation. Because like if it wasn't for that, that collar that he put on, like uh, him and Eisenhorn would have been great friends. Like the best of friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the one little thing that puts him away. But yeah, we find out the information. Like, so he finds out... Uh, what to do basically to kind of deal with demon host and, and how to defeat them and, how and how to make weapons them. that can defeat them and they make these like rad weapons like this little you know stick what's it called again the uh, so he makes a like a force staff with uh a, a like a skull and beer is like yeah i tried to make it out of a bunch of different things but i couldn't figure out what to make it out of so i eventually just carved a perfect copy of your skull out of the lith itself <laughs> so yeah he carves a copy of Eisenhorn's skull out of the stone of the chaos part of a dying asteroid planet which pretty 40k and then takes uh the swordman chick sword which is like a special force sword bar barbarister or uh, barbarister uh, barbarous i think right i think it's i think it starts ends with an er barbarister which person Eisenhorn's sword is that uh, barbarous oh 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 i sorry I thought you were naming a different character that he also made a weapon for, and I was very confused. No, yeah, he stole the swordsman chick sword and like hammered a bunch of runes into it. Oh, uh, or had to the, reforge our, it. The uh, the swordsman chick who died, right? Yeah, Aranara. Or uh, yeah. Barbarisator. Uh, Barbarisator. Okay. Mm, I I literally just looked it up. I was gonna say I wrote it down as anger head or something like that. That's the swordsman chick's name. Yeah. Yeah. Her sword has a name too. Okay, you you're talking about the actual name of the sword. Sorry. Because he talks about it all the fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I don't listen to that. But then, smash cut to uh, the Eye of Terror. Did you just hit buttons? No. Okay. Well, I did, but they didn't do anything. Okay, good. <laughs> smash cut to shutting off the board. <laughs> what happens to the Eye of Terror? I don't remember anything in the... Oh. The, the, the quick sauce is around the Eye of Terror. Hold on. No, because we have the... We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, are you trying to push Sorry. us through? Are we, uh, are we running long? Oh, so long, but that's okay. All right, so he sends out he's he breaks everybody up at this point, sends them out to do some special missions, right. and he sits down with the astropath in a chapel on a planet, and like sends a bunch of coded messages out to like his, his what who he wants to be his allies. Oh yeah, yeah. How and, dare I skip? And the this? Wit, the witch hunter shows up to take him down. The witch hunter oh, inquisitor. He goes guy. to get his weapons blessed at the church, right? right? After that, so after he sends out these messages, he goes to a like a shrine world to get his weapons blessed by a cardinal. But with the astropath, with the astropath and Medea, and so Medea like uh, uh, ends up taking off after the witch hunter shows up, right? Well, I think she was she was gone before. Oh the yeah, witch she was getting up. the gun cutter, right? Um, so the witch hunter shows up, or he's sitting with the crone, and the crone's like, "Well, uh, this is the it's astropath." Is like, he's like, "This is where I die," and he's like heretic you killed me as i said you would he's like what are you talking about and then you know gray knight hunter pants mcgee who also hates eisenhorn shows up and is like ha ha i'm claiming he's like you. the ministerium version of a of an inquisitor right yeah so a pussy. um speaking of which we but didn't power armor. talk about this before but he does show up at the end of the dark eldar thing and almost kill oh yeah that's yeah. right he, he and Medea a, shoots him off. He has like a right. hard on for getting he, Eisenhorn. He and Eisenhorn have bumped heads many times, and each time Eisenhorn's gotten the better of him. So he's well, actually they kind of, switch off, they trade off. Okay, I mean, I, from what I've from what I read in or listened to in this book, Eisenhorn at this point has seems to have gotten the better of him most of the times. So that's why he has such a I hate you, Eisenhorn. I'm going to kill you if I get it the chance. And okay. it, so now that Eisenhorn's you know heretic, uh, Diabolus, yeah, he's been tracking him the whole time, and he like throws off an invisibility cloak. He, he's like I feel he device. twirled his mustache and his yes. fingers as well. I do that. I, I get that. He's very much so. Anyway, Eisenhorn barely stays alive fighting this guy for a minute. And then Medea throws him the sword. And once he gets his sword, like, it's over. Like, he chops the dude oh, I thought, into pieces. I thought Medea blew him away with a gun cutter. No, no, no. Eisenhorn, once he gets uh, Barbarister. 
Okay, so he gets the sword. He kills Barbara Sater. Barbara Sater, and he kills this guy, and he, and he says something along the lines of, "This is the first death in this caper that I do not feel guilty about," kind of thing. Because you're a fucking dick. Uh, and then they go on this grand, a really, really short chapter to describe the taking of Quixos and the killing of everything, and it's it just flew. Considering how long they they talked about like the Thrace stuff. Well, after this, he meets up with everyone. So he sends out his message. Everyone right. meets comes up with the Inquisitors. The Inquisitors. He says that Quixos is still alive. This is what I believe. Here's my proof. Here's my proof. Here's my plan. And if and if it turns out I'm wrong, I'm you can kill me for being and a so heretic there's Diabolus. four Inquisitors. There's one dude from Cadia Voke. who gets sent. There's Voke, um, um, Titus Endor. No, Heldane is not there. Oh, I thought I thought Heldane was there. No, and then it's and then it's a guy, a representative of the Order Xenos, who basically tells. Uh, Eisenhorn, if you fuck this up, I'm going to kill you. And the the definition of fucking it up is very broad. Right. Yeah. So now so, smash cut punch board to the eye of chaos. No. Damn it. We're almost there, Dave. So then he gets he. So those are the four that show up, but he has another communicate from uh, Ravner, and Ravner tells him, "Hey, you guys think that you're going to go to the eye of terror, but you're not." Because you're going to go to this planet that uh, Quixos has been. He mined a big rock out of this planet. It's very similar qualities to the Cadian Gate pylons. And he's been, he shot into the mountain of this other planet. And basically and created his own Cadian pylon. And he's going to test it out n- near the Eye of Terror. Got it. So they go there. Yeah. And they get information about who ordered the pillar. And where it was being shipped to. Yep. And that's how they found out where the planet was. Yep. And now, Danny, you're the only one who hasn't done it yet. So, like me and Dave said, smash cut too. So it's only smash fair. cut. Eye of terror. Okay. No, not yet. No, I'm kidding. It is. Not. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> pretty sure that's it. Um, and it's a full out war. Like, oh it's, man. Yeah, but it's it's not yeah. it's not long in descriptive terms for uh, considering everything else that you've read in, in terms of the book because it's literally oh, like the last chapter of the book but okay if war is like jacking off i've been jerked off hard for like 200 pages with like only little breaks in between i don't need so good i don't right. need a major hand job in that last chapter i just need to finish <laughs> so we get like this war um quick so- and we get kind of our first glimpse of quick sauce right and right. he is just yeah, because they basically they blast it's a, a bunch voice. of mutants out. Like there's a whole town that's grown up around this like thing, and like they go in there with a bunch of Imperial Guard and all these Inquisitor retinues. Like they find out, yeah, Kaskins. 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 and they they find out Titus Endor is uh, like the guy who's been uh, selling secrets to the Order Malleus. Yeah, so he goes get this guy out of my sight, and like has T- uh, Titus Endor his best friend. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what makes it sad. Yeah. Anyway, so they go. So they so him and three inquisitors go down to fight the demon host. Voke dies to uh, demon host. Did you do air quotes here? Because I feel like for Voke, no, he like no, he 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 literally dies. He's just dead. I mean, people don't seem to stay dead. It seems like in forty k though. So uh, so uh, unless Cherry Bale is super happy when Eisenhorn kills him because it frees him. Right, And and that's when we find out. That's exactly why Cherubiel has been haunting Eisenhorn's dreams for 300 years or whatever the fuck it's been by yeah. this point. is because he saw that one day Eisenhorn would free him from servitude. As, as long as he kept him on the right path. Right. So he, he was technically manipulated right. so I'm like, the whole time. You've been fucking with a dude's entire life because 1.250 years in the future you're going to be freed by him? Dude. That's the long con right there. That's, well, that's yeah. how demons think, man. Well, yeah. Time isn't a thing for them. That pisses Eisenhorn off. But so, so bad, hard. Yeah. yeah. So hard. And then, you know, Wild Cherry Pepsi bounces out, leaving him with profanity, the other demon host. Whom Eisenhorn literally erases from existence with his four staff. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was like not not impressive. That's what I was saying. It's like I was expecting this long drawn out fight thing. And instead he's just like, I'm going to press a button here. And I, I enjoy done. that he just like, foos for dot him out of existence yeah. with yeah. his staff. It showed Basically, how powerful that thing is there. Um, I like how Quicksauce still believes he's doing right. Still technically is doing right. And called, called him an, like a, a heretic the entire time. Yeah, yeah, called him the heretic. And yeah. is described as looking like the the Marine from the front of the Chaos Codex from 3rd edition. He's just really, really fucked up. He's got vestigial antlers. Yeah. And uh, like, and he's, he doesn't speak with his mouth. He uses psychic powers. But he cuts down the other two Inquisitors in like two seconds. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, he's got like warp. He's got warp time. Yeah, <laughs> pre FAQ warp time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so uh, what I what I like about him is is that he literally thought he was doing right, and the thing that he thought he was doing right is that if he created a whole other Cadia, he would be able to close the eye forever. Right. Yes. Which and I was like, well, I mean, if that's his plan, maybe we using the power <laughs> of a little book called uh, Jesus the Christ Codicium the Mal- Codicium Malleus, the Imperial Primer. Yeah. No, Codicium no. Malleus, which is kind of this book is how we learned how to do demon hosts. It's a, it leads to a path, like down a path, and the Inquisition would not tell you. Yep. Um, right. Eisenhorn. Kind of like a necrotook. Fight ensues. Um, Eisenhorn murders uh, Quicksauce. But Quicksauce was oh. incredibly fast, though. Yeah. No, yeah, Quicksauce was kicking his ass, and it was lucky that Eisenhorn's sword broke. On the demon sword that Quixos had, and then I thought, stabbed de- him. I thought the demon sword broke on Eisenhorn's sword. No, no, no. Eisenhorn's sword broke. Okay. Yeah, Eisenhorn's. Yeah. And then he just kind of got a lucky stab in and killed him. But he was getting his ass kicked. Um, and then, kind of in the the aftermath, Eisenhorn is like, "Oh, you're all forgiven, Eisenhorn. Thank you for for ending this. We're keeping our eye on you. Where's that book that dude had?" And everyone's like, oh. "Right." Guess it burned up. Smash cut. <laughs> <laughs> to I am Terror. Smash cut too. No, uh, to no back to Eisenhorn's house in Gudrun, where he's set up his main home base now, which is the site of the first book, like uh, like the noble the noble house Glaw, mm-hmm. right? Right. So Eisenhorn's basically, t- I think he's taking their house. I don't know. I assume that that's I the assume case. that it's the the, the Claw's house, right? Yeah. And he uh, uh, like he is summoning. He just has finished summoning Ch- Cherry Bale back into right. a body <laughs> to punish him and then like after he's done locks away like this void safe uh like puts the codicia malice back into like its secret hidey hole and like has all his like ritual stuff and then walks upstairs to like his normal house yeah so i enjoyed that the, the book ends with eisenhorn stealing a chaotical tomb using the knowledge in that tomb to summon his enemy Bind him to a body, then lock him in a fucking safe under his office, <laughs> and then just leaves out of out, out of spite. spite. Yeah, pure spite. I mean, I've done worse out of spite. You've clone grown someone or a fat grew a person to lock a body yeah, into. I knocked a blood thir- a metal bloodthirster off the table just like yeah. your couch. Ooh. Oof. One or one or two bits missed, but I mean highlights in this book really the assault on the parade, amazing. Oh man, that was so yeah, that was awesome. Very descriptive, wonderful battle. Um, the 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 sequence where Eisenhorn is in prison and is it was a highlight for me as well, just that because was he was getting so frustrated by bad workmanship. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what what else do you guys enjoy there about the Eisenhorn? I don't know. I think we I think we covered it pretty well here. I I, mean, I really like the the twists. Like the the mutant yeah. scene, that was my favorite part. For me, it's the uh, the stuff that I like about Dan Abnett's writing is the occasional intrusion of actually um, a- actual humanity and just kind of like, <sighs> okay, come on, uh, like when they're breaking into the the mansion, uh, the arbiter that tells him, yeah, I have the void shield cards was named you know Luckus or something like that, but spelled luckless. Oh yeah, and he's, he's just like, like making you, jokes about. He's it. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That was pretty good. Is, okay, so listen, Luckless, how do I get in the house? And he's like... That's not my name, sir. Like, shut up. Yeah, I know. How do I get in? <laughs> yeah. So. I, I think, I mean, the the slow it's the slow decline of Eisenhorn doing everything he can to secure the Imperium, but slowly slowly kind of falling himself. That is the, the hallmark of this book for me. And, for sure. And when we go on to start earlier so we can talk more about Hereticus at a later date... Um, kind of the continuation of that is is just really good. Oh, man. Like, Fascinating. How, how far does one person, like, do you become what you hate to save what you love? It's, see your, live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Oh, we can do that. Something, however that yeah. works. That That's copyright, but we'll be right back. Earl Hagen was a legend. In 1960, he whistled his way into Hollywood and into our hearts. Decades later, he made a comeback, lending those lustrous lips in the 1980s to such bands as The Scorpions, Guns N' Roses, and Pat Benatar. A half century after his humble beginnings, he's at it again. This time without cumbersome musical accompaniment, he'll have you wetting your whistle and whistling along. 
his new album, Earl Whistles Disney, is sure to be a hit with all generations. Order now and receive a bonus album, Earl Whistles More Shit, a collection of previously unreleased material of Earl's favorite songs through the years. On this bonus album, he demonstrates his newly mastered technique of inward whistling. Order yours today on compact disc or double length cassette. Also available at fine retailers such as Walgreens, CVS, and participating Sam Goody stores. Earl Whistles Disney. Buy it today. And we're back. No, and we're back. And we turned Dave <laughs> oh, down, oh, oh. as is tradition. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, no, so, yeah, Eisenhower, I mean, another great book. Uh, I, like, I think all three of us agree, uh, second favorite in the series. Uh, and then, Dave, hopefully your opinion of first changes when you read the third book. Um, I don't have anything I want to plug. We're over two and a half hours now. Yeah. Uh, so we're all very sleepy, uh, and we want to go home. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's just. Uh, yeah, if you, if you made it this far, Jesus Christ, thank so, you so much. Use the hashtag. Yeah, real sucks. You know, don't <laughs> hashtag John sucks on this one. He can. He's going to edit it down, so it's going to. Uh, no, this is going to be two and a half hours because uh, you know, real real life behind the scenes here. Uh, my computer is due to be done by Apple uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, so <laughs> one or two days before release. Uh, but, but yeah. yeah. We, you know, sorry, we ran long, but we like talking about this subject. Yeah, and that's true. It. Also, this is free, and, and you guys can hit stop at any time. You already, <laughs> you already hit the download button. I'm, I'm, I'm good. And Mr. I stream these, Dan, yeah. Mister Abnett, if you listen to this, don't take offense to the fact that we butchered the names of your and, stuff. And we, please send me an autographed copy of Gardens of the Galaxy Volume One from uh, 2009. Um. <laughs> oh, anything you want to request from Dan Abnett while we're at it? What's up? Let's end there. All right. Well, for Mob Rules, I've been John. I've been Dave. I've been Danny.